Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Pancake Podcast. This yes. week brought to you by MeUndies, Stamps.com, and RTX Austin. Hey, pancakes. pancakes! I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Pancake. I am Bernie. And I'm Gus. Pancakes I, did not sponsor this podcast. Some people, right, last week thought we'd forgotten. Yeah. Because we didn't did, say anything, that's why. People it's the most it important day of the year. No, they, we just didn't mention it last week. Do you right. make sure you're in town for Shrove Tuesday? <laughs> yeah. For this podcast? Yeah. But I also, it's we're running into this problem. It's come up all week, uh, where people are upset with us for not marketing enough. Gus, I saw you got involved. I'm, with got, it. I'm, I'm so over it. I'm so over <laughs> you, it. it. There's no happy. There's no perfect amount of marketing. There's for, for nothing, what? Anything. In particular, this was a discussion I think around RVB, the new season that's coming out. That there wasn't enough marketing for it. You know, which I guess that means we didn't. And other shows that have too much marketing. Yeah, right. That we didn't market it to the point where everyone, I think you said this, to where you're completely sick of it. Because that person had told me previously they were really sick about some other stuff we were marketing. Oh, God. You hey, did memory. you know you can watch Genlock this Saturday? It's the last episode. <laughs> by <laughs> the way, mics. coincidentally. Okay. Barb, and I have a, Barb and I have a thing going. Oh, we're bumping mics. Sorry. Whoa. Never happens, I swear. Take me to dinner first. <laughs> this is dinner. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> yeah, is it, man. Right. We also have chicken sandwiches. I, uh, Barb's the only person I saw that <clears throat> ate a chicken sandwich. I regret it now because I should have yeah. saved the chicken for chicken and oh, pancakes. Who wants pancake first? What do you want in it? Over there. Hit her up. Chicken Barb? and pancakes. You didn't want is, chocolate chips because you posed with the chocolate chips and you were strove Tuesday pancakes. I actually, I'm good on the chocolate chips. I kind of want some uh, strawberries. Do you want it in the pancake or on top? On, on top. On top of the pancake. Yeah. There you go. You can just cook of, it normally. Oh, you know, I'm, well then, if no one's else going to say anything, I'm going to have some chocolate chips. Hell yeah. Get in there, bro. So, we actually have a big group of people. Um, oh, that, pancake cam. Look at that. Look at, oh. we, we've evolved so far. Oh, look at that. Now I feel like i got to get my distribution much better than what it was. That's nah. crap. It's terrible. That it looks terrible. like a, look at this area right here. It's like <laughs> I, I even add, add, more. add more. Add more. Yeah, until you can't see pancake. There you go. Then you're okay. done. That is atrocious. That's even worse. Way somehow. Too much. You, you don't know it. what's too much. It's like a raw. It's shack. my pancake, so I can do this. Mush, mush, mush. There you go. Oh, mush. Speaking of mushes, mush has a condition. Cuteness. He's pretty cute, but this a cute <laughs> cuteness. This cute. This condition is pretty cute. So, um, uh, Ash and I were talking about whether or not. Uh, uh, cats lose their teeth. I don't know how this conversation came up. Do cats lose their teeth? And yes. if so, how come you don't see cats like you see kindergartners who have missing no front teeth? Yeah. Like, where are their missing fangs? Mm -hmm. Does it, like, push the other one down instantly and come in right away? Is, so there, is there a word no for that in English? Or is it just gap tooth? I think it's just gap tooth. Okay. That's oh, a healthy sound. That English? was a clunk, gap. In Spanish, there's a word for that. What What's that? When someone's missing their teeth like that, you call them chimuela or chimuelo. When they're missing uh, teeth? Yeah, when they're like they're like when they're a little kid who's lost their teeth. What is, is that? Am I right, right, Patrick? Yeah. yeah. What does that translate to? It's like it's like it's like it's a little kid who's missing their teeth. I don't know. I don't know what the it translates translation. to chimuelo. Yeah. <laughs> hey Barb, I'm gonna let you strawberry this up yourself. <laughs> Thanks, White. I'm terrible. Did I ever tell you about my friend who Wait, we, we went to Taco Bell and they had the chili cheese burrito? They used to call it the Chilito? In Chilito. The, they used to call it the Chilito. Oh. It, that was the that was the Taco what, Bell version what, of it. You're going to keep us in suspense here. What's Mush's condition? Yeah, what's let me finish this. Let me finish. Oh my god, right here. his his condition's not going away. It's permanent apparently. Uh, he's fine by the way. He'll be fine. Um, that gammied up that spatula it's straight away. That's why that was your I, that's, first pancake. I got a lot of chocolate chip on that. Whoop, let's go down here. Bananas too. So my friend, uh, he would never eat the Chilito because when he was a kid, his parents called his dick a Cheeto. That's what they would call it. What? So it always made him mad. <laughs> it, like when you're in the tub and the kids like they're like, "Wash your cheat though," you know. <laughs> so he was always like, "Ugh," <laughs> whatever. You know, not only is it you know you're eating dick, it's little kid dick. So to him, it was like, "Hey, welcome hey, to Shrove Tuesday, everybody." Did, did you see the Michael Jackson documentary? <laughs> oh my god, no! <laughs> I like how we can get on a tangent. We're it, never gonna get back from it. I guess uh, they they played they aired part one of it last night on uh, on HBO, leaving ne leaving Neverland. Yeah. Very graphic talk about a little kid dick. What do you oh, mean? So was he a monster piece who, of shit? Who was doing this? I feel uh, like this is a bad time to ask for forks. Why? We forgot the. F that's my bad. Do we have forks? The, the, oh, the, we. I normally had wouldn't everything. interrupt a, a right there. conversation. Where? Right in front of you. They're in the cup. Oh, they're in the cup. In the glass. Oh yeah, my right god! Right in front of Babs. <laughs> oh, they're metal ones. Look at us being all fancy. I think that's why I couldn't yeah, see them. Yeah, what do you want? I want chunky chips. That's about it, really, isn't it? Okay. You want this one, the one that has too many? Yes. You do? The one I just made? Is it uh, sitting there? Yeah, I'll, I'll have it. Yeah, it's massive. How about uh, you? What do you want? Uh, I'll take chocolate chip and banana, please. Chocolate chip? Take you want banana in the pancake? Paper uh, off on top. the syrup? Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it, it depends uh, who you believe, I guess. 
about uh about that documentary. How many people did they interview for that? Uh, this documentary s- s- focuses specifically on two people. Mm. Uh, distribution's way better on that one. Can we oh, get Pancake Camp? There it is. It's looking good. Look at that. What, what's so much better. Sauce? It's not great. Like it's Chucky's. All right. There's uh some syrup over there and some of this. That's uh, ready the Apex Legend uh, shotgun pellet indicator. Gus, that's why you have so, uh, that. Dude, what, you're what's, going, what's going on with Mush? Okay, so here's the deal. So, <laughs> so we were wondering how come you never see a cat with a gap tooth smile? Mm-hmm. And well. uh, because and you know Mush is a kitten and he doesn't have that. For some reason, we were checking out his teeth. I don't know if it was related to the conversation or what, or maybe it was like some kind of serendipity. Uh, he has what's called. Uh, retained dis- what do you want? I was showing the pancake oh. <laughs> I thought you wanted pancake <laughs> batter on top of that. Uh, what he has what's want? called res- retained deciduous teeth. So his new, like adult fangs are growing in, and apparently the way this works in cats, I've learned a lot the last few days, in the last 24 hours. Uh, cats, their teeth grow in, and they grow in right, like, just like Barb said, they go up basically into their baby teeth, and then That's poke them I out thought, as yeah. like a hollow shell. That's hmm. crazy. Kind of like, you ever seen a cat when it claws something? And the claw and, comes off? Yeah, and the claw just comes off. Yeah, That's how they sharpen their claws. I found Columbo's like teeth before. Off. What? I found Columbo's old baby teeth. Have you? Yep. Yeah, just like sitting around with like fangs or just like the little teeth? A little tooth. Fang. I found Benjamin's and uh, Oswald's. Yep. So, nice. that one's a little cooked. Uh, so, nice. nice. Uh, <laughs> I get that every time. Nice. Um, oh, it's good. So, Mush has two sets of fangs now. And like one is, and we're not. We're hoping it's not the adult ones. We're hoping it's the baby ones. One of them's are like at a funny kind of goofy angle. So he's like, Mur. when he says this, he kind of stupid smile. So he's going to the vet tomorrow to get his teeth pulled. We we found it really fast, uh-huh. which is a good problem. You to can't have. just wait for it to fall off. Or we don't never. We just spent. You know, we we pay such close attention to this cat. We don't know if he's like at a normal stage of this. Mm. But everything we're reading saying is saying if he's got uh, retained deciduous teeth. What are we looking at? No, this is the photo. This isn't what it looks like. Maybe I could actually send a photo. That's not mush. That's okay. definitely not mush. Gotcha. That was a reference photo I saw online too. God, this is so delicious. It's delish. Also, why Mickey's. do people's favorite podcast is is one where we just eat? I think people it's like mukbang. People yeah, like it's what popular. People yeah. eat. Well, All it's right, broadcast crew wants a pancake. It's I a saw, theme. Speaking of mukbang, is on here? Is on one? I uh, I watched a documentary on PBS the other week about live streaming in China. I don't know if y'all saw that. What was it called? It was called uh, People's Republic of Desire. Oop. And it was Oop. interesting. They followed a couple of streamers uh, who stream on this really popular platform in China called YY. And the whole thing just seems like it, it all seems almost criminal to me. The way that they the way that they described it. So it's like uh, you have, for example, a live streamer. Like let's say Gavin is a live streamer in China. Hello. You're racist. Gavin is a, a live streamer, Gavin and they have this. Live they have this yearly competition where whoever, like most streamers, make their money in this one month. It's like if you win that competition, you get the most views, you've won the most money. But in order to win the competition, you people need to tip to you. But you can only win if you have an agent, and the agents are the people who contribute most of the money to sounds you. Like, but like then you end up paying them that dude. money back. But it's like if in, in the end, it's promoting the platform. So it seems to me almost like. They never make this connection. They never say this is the case, but it seems to me almost like the agents work for the platform using money to funnel it into the streamers who then have to pay it back to make it look like they're making more money than they really make. It was all really weird and shady. That sounds weird. Can really I be honest? Shady. There's all these billionaires now in China. I have to admit, I don't understand the economic system in China. Are, are they communist? There's limited uh, capitalism. There's lim- What does that mean, limited capitalism? It sounds like it's what you're describing is Twitch with limited capitalism. Yeah. It's market controlled. Like their their currency is not market based. It's government manip- manipulated. So anytime there's currency fluctuations, it's government regulating whether or not the currency is going up or down. The, it's pe- it's a pegged value. So that's really not free market. But mm-hmm. you can still go and open businesses and conduct trade. A private each business, other. Y- clearly. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And in fact, this platform YY, they're publicly traded, and I think they even said they're publicly traded on Nasdaq as well. So it was it was all really it was really fascinating and so invest now is they, what you say. They follow these people's troubles for like or not troubles struggles for like over a year. It's like they follow one female streamer and one male streamer and just like all the shit they have to go so through. This is a documentary. Yeah, it's really really interesting. It's an independent lens on PBS. Highly recommend it. It was super Damn. and I super assume less talk about little kids penises. <laughs> less talk about lot, little lot kids penises. I watched a documentary this weekend called uh, Behind the Curve. You guys heard about this? Mm-mm. It's a documentary about people who believe in the flat earth theory. Oh, God. I, I, I kind of think that's one of those things we talked about uh, last week. I think 
you when you weren't on. Maybe it was the one that you weren't on. But we talked about how people who are employed by Facebook to debunk stuff now then start to believe in it themselves. Yeah. And I think that's like the flat earth thing. I think people start to do it ironically. And then they just kind of sucked in. Should we all try and do it? Is that what it, what was the doc about? It, it, it <clears> wasn't <throat> trying to convince the audience that it was true, but more following the people who do believe this theory and how it all came to kind of grow into this. What are we hiding? Like, what's the government trying to hide from people? I, right. I what, what's what's the motivation yeah. behind hiding the fact that Earth? Hey, like, I get the the moon landing. Yeah. Because we're trying to you know beat everyone else on the planet to the moon. There's, what's the motivation for that the Earth is flat? So what do people think is happening when you fly to different places and eventually end up back where you start? Well, the they disc. think that you just fly from one side to the other. They don't think that you go around the globe. No, you like go in a circle, not in a sphere. Yeah. But if you never turn left or right, how do you explain that? If you never turn left or right. Like imagine I plotted a but course around the Earth and there was ne- there was no turns involved. No, around, How nobody does around that, the- right? You're saying a situation that never happens to anybody. But no one gets on a plane and says, I want to fly around the world. They fly to a place and back from a place. You could do that on a, di- on a disc. We well, could have flown around the world. Yeah, but you have to yeah, stop at we airports. To India and yeah. stuff. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, also it's like, I'm not flying the plane, right? So yeah. oh, like the pilots are in anywhere. on it, you know? Oh, How do yeah. I know? I think everyone's in on it. Right. The, yeah. the funny thing about the documentary <clears throat> is that they disprove their theory multiple times. Oh, that's the documentary. I keep reading about this. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just like, huh, that's strange. (laughs) And then they're like, well, I guess we have to go about it a different way. Yeah, you can't. You are disprove. You're trying to prove your theory. There's no arguing with someone who like who's who's like that. They're just not going to listen to you at all. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of which, um, I watched another thing. I watched a real sports segment actually about these two guys who were in competition. They both wanted to be the first people ever to walk across Antarctica, sea to sea, without any support. That to carry all of their own supplies, and it was like a thousand mile trek. See, you always tell stories, and they get kind of hung up on the way you pronounce stuff wrong. <laughs> what I pronounce wrong? Antarctica. 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 That's what I said. Antarctica. 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 Yeah. It's, Antarctica. It's not like you're saying Antarctica somewhere in the world. Antarctica. I, I would say Antarctica. Yeah. Antarctica. That's what I said. Antarctica. No, that's not stupid. How would? Oh wait, how do you say it? Antarctica. That's wrong. <laughs> There's a T in there. Here's how I say it. <laughs> Look, a- the word Arctic is in there, right? So is the word ant. Right, Antarctica. You didn't say the T the last time. You said Antarctica. Antarctica. What's, what's See, the you're saying, it, you're, you're saying it different you're every time. An, you're saying Antarctica. Antarctica. Right now. Antarctica. That would put the T in the first syllable. Antarctica. What? Yeah. How do you Antarctica. say the Antarctica? How do you Antarctica. say the top Antarctica. one? What's the one in the north? The North Pole, dummy. <laughs> anyway, they had to walk across Antarctica, <laughs> Antarctica, only with their own supplies, without anybody helping Did them. Did they have to take a spaceship to Antarctica? <laughs> two guys. It was two guys, and uh, ended up uh, the one who ended up doing it the fastest. I think it took him fifty days. Wait, they weren't together? No, they were walking. They were doing it separately from each other. Oh, That's so weird. Do it alone. That's like two Captain Marvel movies coming out in the same month. <laughs> That's fucking weird. Did they start? At what each timing? End? High five in the middle. They started at the same site a couple miles from each other, and I guess, like, it's just so out of the way that- Dude, I want to see that documentary about those bitter rivalry between these two fucking dorks that nobody cares about. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> it was really interesting. They had to carry- when they started the trip, they had to carry 400 pounds of supplies with them. <gasps> How? As a general they rule? Sled? They put it on a sled. Well, that's what they needed to get across. Kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and you all aren't taking me seriously, but it was super fucking interesting. Well, What's that I, one I, quote? I'll tell you why I don't uh, take it seriously. It was, I also watched a documentary this last weekend. I watched a documentary on the fire Festival. Which one? Who uh, I watched the Netflix one. I okay. watched the Netflix one. <laughs> What's it like living two months in the past? Is it interesting back there? <laughs> I'm really curious about the thing we already talked about. That's before. our time on Earth, Gus. You're on Antarctica. <laughs> 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 the, uh, but it was it was I I had heard so much about it, and then like kind of like this flat Earth thing where you hear that uh, that they disprove their own theory. To, the one thing I kept hearing about the fire festival was the interview with this one dude, where they had something like four tankers filled with. Evian Water? Um, I don't know why they specifically called out their sponsor after the thing fell apart. Mm-hmm. Oh, the suck job pot? And, yeah, and it was held up by customs. And they, they were, three days before the festival, basically, they knew it wasn't going to happen. <clears throat> and there's this guy who's, to me, the best part of the documentary. Such a, like, genuine, honest dude. And he said, the guy, Billy, came to him and said, hey, we need you to take one for the team. I think his name is Andy. Andy, we need you to go down and suck this customs guy's dick. And he, like, talks about going home taking a shower, 
drinking mouthwash is the way he said it, you know, but he's telling the story. And uh, he goes down there fully prepared to suck this dude's dick. And uh, that's that's his Wait, word. Like, it's like, not... it like in order to write off like thirty five thousand dollars worth of custom charges. One hundred and seventy five. One hundred seventy five. Was it? Yeah. But this is not like metaphorically speaking. This is actual. No, actual. No. His Penis dick. going in his mouth. I nope. want. I want to know what one hundred seventy five thousand dollar blowjob is. Yeah. I also would like to meet the person who could give a uh, hundred seventy five thousand dollars. Jessica, blowjob. do you want to man that station over there? You guys want to like get that one going? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> I'll help you guys. I'll help you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just put the griddle on high. That's my recommendation. I like how she came for pancakes and it was. I, 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 I thought they were making pancakes. Made. Did you ask Our her pancakes. to cook? Cause she's the only woman it's over there. No, cause she literally just walked in. I saw her. I'm also, if I'm if you want one. my oh, it's hot message to my yeah, madness, asking my... Jessica, I don't think people get to see Jessica on camera. Oh, yeah. oh, Where's one of my other fucking true. John and Blaine to go up there? No way. People are sick of those motherfuckers. Oh, wouldn't be. Anybody else pancake? And but you know what I want to try? You know what I want to try? Hey, Blaine. Can you bring me one of those fried chicken sandwiches? I'm gonna make like Ooh. a chicken and waffle thing. <gasps> How much water do you put in here, Bernie? You put the whole cup in. The whole cup? They measured it for you. They're professional. Thank Gus. you. Been doing Broadcast. it for fucking That's seven years. Very nice. Really nice. They had to carry 400 pounds of water across Antarctica to bring it to us. No, no, talk more about Fire Festival. We're all really so curious. Oh, you know about Fire Festival. If there's a T the, in a word, the no. <laughs> too far talk. to the front, you I just miss it. it. You're not allowed to talk because you put R's in everything as a British person. No, that's true. Saw it. Sorry, yes, stuff like that. We all have consonant problems. I still can't get over the fact that I thought you were saying the word ass for the entirety of me knowing you, but you're just saying arse. Yup, arse. Arse, yeah. I'm not, yeah. Can you hand me uh, that? Otherwise, I'd be pronouncing it ass. Hand me that Mrs. Buttersworth. Okay, but I'll tell you what, dude, already. this Fire what Festival doc, I know it is kind of old news, and Fire I'm Festival itself is pretty old news, but damn, dude, it was. It was so appropriate to me to be watching this fire festival doc at the same time that our community put out a video uh, Which was about vessel our ongoing experiences with vessel Gavin brought up this cup <laughs> years ago on the podcast That could if you poured a liquid into it, it would tell you Exactly what was in the cup. That was the pitch document that they put on there. we pseudo crowdfunding pre we, we never got the vessel And we talked about it for four five years. <laughs> I think on the video I posted Someone made it was like 1100 days since the order Really? Because I bought it one year for Gavin for Christmas And it, I'll, every year then I would just get updates as to why this cup wasn't coming out At what out. point do you get refunded? Never! They offered to send me uh, like a compens- uh, compensatory? Compensatory? Gus? Help me, how do you spell that? Antarctica! <laughs> <laughs> compensatory I like that I mispronounced pronou pronounce as spell <laughs> How do you spell that for me? But uh... That's not good. No? Fried chicken. All right, here's a, here's a question for and you. Pancakes. I tried pancake and fried chicken for most chicken sandwich. That's not at all like chicken sandwich. Is a pancake just a flat waffle? I say no because the waffles also got the crispy ridges. Like the texture makes but that's it. That's just the way different. it's cooked. But there's something about the texture. It's a better mouthfeel. I use the same point, batter. Use the same batter. Yeah. At some point, are we actually gonna have proper pancakes like crepes? In for Pancake Tuesday, because that's what the people actually have instead of this shite. What does that mean? You've been asking for that for seven years now? Yep. What does that mean? Why don't you fucking go out and get one of those godless crepe-making things and fucking bring it to the podcast if you, you gotta want have that. it loose. These are American pancakes. <laughs> You'll roll it, you put lemon in it. Put lemon in a pancake? What the fuck's wrong with Lemon you? juice. Squeeze lemon in it. Maybe I'm a bit sugar. How, how are things going? Oh, there? yep! Oh. Sorry, Gavin got real excited that's over crepe. that crepe. That's a crepe. Yeah, dude. Crepe. That's a crepe. That's what I think. That's what you eat on pancakes. That's day. not a pancake. No, you don't. Crepe. Because if you ate a fucking French food, you'd be celebrating Mardi Gras. So go fuck yourself. This is Pancake <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> eat a fucking pancake. Shrove Tuesday. So, what's wrong with oh, you? I thank you. So why don't we eat shroves? <laughs> what, is, what does shrove mean? Apart. Have we talked about that before? <laughs> Probably seven <laughs> times. So over there we have uh, the we have Jessica and John. There's Blaine in the background, and there's Andrew who always refuses to introduce himself. In any way. <laughs> he was on an episode of Game Time with us, and uh, that was like the number one comment was, "Why doesn't this guy introduce himself?" <laughs> He's also the guy that everyone thinks is you in every RT live video. We're not trying to push that narrative though. No, we're trying to get as far away. You even grew that stupid mustache. Can you guess? <laughs> <laughs> can you guess the temperature it's based on looking mustache. at them? <laughs> yeah, it looks uh. You guys look like you're dressed for some Do cold weather. Do you think weather. this is the last cold day of the year? No. I think it's the last cold week of the year. It's three degrees today. It's pretty cold. It's pretty brutal. It's no Antarctica. <laughs> but it's so pretty right. fucking cold. What, what is the- There's a problem. There's a problem with this. I'm discovering now. Couldn't figure out what was wrong with this fried chicken sandwich. <laughs> on pancake. I thought clearly it's the waffle that separates it. Yeah. 
Is it the ch- chicken? Uh, it's the These pickle. Mine, <laughs> 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 pickle really throws it off, man. <laughs> is it because it's seeped into the yeah, chicken? Yeah, the pickle's gone, pickle but pancake. there's still the like pickle juice in there. Yeah, like the eau de pickle Ugh. is in there. Gavin, so would gross. you like to make me a, a pancake? I like how it goes. Here, <laughs> oh, here we go. The guy, the guy got the whipped cream. I didn't put whipped cream on mine. Hey, I want to warn everybody. Oh, Sorry, <laughs> hold on. Oh, I went off to a. It happens to all of us. <laughs> Sorry. I want to warn everybody for today's post show. Uh, John and I just saw Captain Marvel, and uh, we're not supposed to tell you until later this week how much we like the movie. We can do, we can do social right now, but we can do po- we can do posts on uh, or we can do the post show because we'll come do, out to later. We can do social. We just can't, like, official review until Tuesday. I, 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 I never give my opinion of how. Yeah. Much I like that movie. Yeah, it was, paper I'm, towels. I'm not gonna talk paper about towels the for movie, It's you know. so much. Spit it out into the <laughs> Why plate. Why did I even get my makeup done today? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> get some chicken on there. Yeah. No, chicken whip. Oh, um, there's a way we. Well, here. You, you okay? Yep. Okay. Uh, here, I'm gonna read this thing here. I'm gonna remind everyone this episode of the Receipt Podcast <laughs> is brought to you by MeUndies. Ask yourself this one very important question. Is your underwear making you happy at this very moment? Or were you not even thinking about your underwear? Uh, you know, I say MeUndies is super comfortable, uh, super colorful, got great designs, my favorite underwear I've ever owned. These undies are so soft, they make Bob Ross's voice sound like Gilbert Gottfried. They're so soft that Kenny G thinks about them to get inspired to write his next song. MeUndies uses the coveted micromodal fabric, which is a full three times softer than cotton. So take that in your face, cotton. Uh, not only will you feel like your loins are being hugged by joy itself, but MeUndies gives you multiple style options for both men and women. You can choose between classic colors and adventurous prints, prints like significant otters, plant babies, and shamrocks. And speaking of prints, why not match your bottom half with your better half and get matching prints for you and your partner? MeUndies is the go-to for the softest loungewear this side of the Rio Grande. Uh, hang out in their super comfy lounge pants and onesies. I almost mispronounced lounge. Uh, yes, MeUndies makes onesies and they are incredible. To get 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash roosterteeth. That's MeUndies.com slash roosterteeth. Thank you, MeUndies, for sponsoring I this have, episode of the Pancake Podcast. I have an a embarrassing MeUndies story from last weekend. What's up? Oh, last week, rather. Um, so I get the Miandi songs. Sorry, stuff on my nose. Right you could just tell me. Right there. Thank you. I thought I'd be subtle on a video <laughs> po- podcast. Right here. Uh, I wear the Miandi songs, and I was getting dressed in a hurry because I had to come film an episode of Always Open at the studio. And right before we were about to start, I had to run to the bathroom, and I pulled down my pants, and I realized that I'm wearing my thong backwards. Okay. And if you don't know how the way a, a thong works. <laughs> It's very thin in the back and thicker in the front. We call them tea backs sometimes. So I guess I didn't really feel it, but the thin part was kind of like splitting my vagina lips. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> but but you need a nice I, cover for your butt. But like. I had to, yeah, I had to run back to film the podcast, so I didn't have time to like take my boots off, take my jeans off, switch my underwear around. <laughs> so I did the entire episode of Always Open with my thong backwards. It would have been quicker just to cut them off. Like yeah, probably. How, how did you not feel it in your canal? I just I just thought I had like a wedgie in my canal. I just thought I had a wedgie the whole morning. Yeah. Canal Street that ties back to Mardi Gras, right? <laughs> That's exactly right. So uh, just comfortable backwards. <laughs> but I got to I got to thinking though about this combination this weekend of while you were over there prepping uh, Andrew and John and Jessica for pancake making. How's it going over there, guys? Going well. We're it's, making pancakes. Go, Who's in charge? Good. Me. John, you're in charge? Yeah. Big responsibility. I'm gonna take, help you up to it. I'm gonna go take a look again. I'm gonna see if I can I'm steal a pancake. I'm the chef. Right. I made That's my why. own pancakes. Let's be clear. Yeah, but guys, just, while you were there, I was talking about how I made my own and the I... whole vessel cups thing came yeah. up this weekend as well. And it's this long standing thing. And it, it just constantly constant reminder to me of just never back. So up. many people are just throwing shit out there saying, give us money for this, and then just not not ever fucking doing the thing. So what are you saying? We should do it? It's just like it's it's crazy to me. I guess I get, I guess what I'm saying from this, Gavin, is I gotta learn to not beat myself up so much when I know I put in all the effort, do a lot of groundwork, do a lot of research, due diligence before we decide to you did attempt something. Years of research, and you spoke to multiple people who had done them before. Yeah, to learn. Yeah, and it's crazy. Other people are just like, oh, this is a thing. Let's let's just go do it. I think we should we should do fake music festival. <laughs> let's do it. Fake Kickstarter. We'll do one. Yeah? Just up front say we're not gonna deliver another. Should you do more? I think Blaine's trying to make protein one more. pancakes. Protein powder and Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's a smart man. And then put some No, it isn't. 
No, it's good. <laughs> There's no way that's gonna work. It's got, he's got a whole experiment. He's torn. I think it'll work. He's totally a thing. It yeah, is. but <laughs> no, normally they the pre-mix it. <laughs> you don't put <laughs> fucking... <laughs> what is this, Bithquick? <laughs> wait, wait, look at you. What are you, part of the machine hail corporate? Look, it's just simple. Yeah, there you go, Blaine. That's how you do it. Do, do it the other way. That'll towards John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... I think everyone makes that same joke. <laughs> Every, everyone does, yeah. <laughs> We stopped making that joke, I think, on the first couple ones, just because there was too many gifts of bar. Maybe you did. <laughs> Repetitive stress injury. There's an entire <laughs> subreddit dedicated to me doing terrible things with pancake batter. <laughs> I believe it's r slash sex pancakes. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yep. I actually checked that today uh, in preparation for this podcast, <laughs> and that's how I realized this was the seventh <laughs> one. Yeah, We've done seven. Great. Didn't There's you say six? That's crazy. That's well, it's, six, it's been one. six years yeah. since the... First. But this is the seventh one. But if we did it, yeah. if we started in 2013, because I remember I brought it up in 2012 and no one believed me. And then so we did it 2013. It when I say this is our fifth one here at stage five, I, I like how we is went all really? the way from not, not yeah. believing you, Gavin, that yeah. this existed, to celebrating it to now telling you how you do it wrong. Great. <laughs> yeah, the America. America. The America. <laughs> that's the full circuit, man. Well, the, the budget on these has got to be getting up there these days. Well, I think last year was probably the highest budget. We had that 3D printer. Oh, mm. should we give the the 3D printer update? People, in case people are wondering what happened to Pancake Bot. Oh no. Oh god. <gasps> what happened? Did we clog it? 2018 to 2018. <laughs> oh, Pancake no. Bot uh, did not last. <laughs> <laughs> what did it? Hey guys, that's a funny bit, but that bin is only for paper and cardboard products. <laughs> I don't know if you know that or not. You can't recycle a bot. There's no. <laughs> I got these two. I got these two. Uh, I got it for the flamethrower. It's a, I got two sides. I got the butane, which is the long blue one that goes on that stupid Elon Musk flamethrower. Uh huh. And then I got the, uh, the, the greener ones that are fatter for like camping stoves. You can't really turn those in anywhere. You can buy them at hardware stores or like at athletic stores, but you can't turn the canisters back in at what, those places. Yeah, what do you do with them? I, you gotta go to a special place in the city to turn them in. So I have like five or six of these different canisters of different sizes that are just rattling around but in my what, trunk. What have you used them for? Just well, flamethrower? Flamethrower and camping. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, uh, I have, you know, I have, a, pro <laughs> I have a propane <laughs> tank that I use for my grill at home, and I took it to get refilled uh, last week or the week before, and, you know, they inspect it when they, you know, when they're going to refill it. The woman inspecting it said, oh, uh, we can't refill this one anymore. I said, why? She goes, it's past its certification date. Yeah. Like a scuba tank. I was like, really? She goes, yeah, it expired like a year ago. I was like, really? What would happen if they did fill it? I think it's like they just, the, the seals may be old or you you can't guarantee it'll last after a certain amount of time. So it's like they have to get it recertified. <laughs> She's like, you can go get it recertified. I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. So I just took it back to like another exchange place. And I was like, I just want to exchange this. They told me it's not certified anymore. Like, All right. I still remember how terrified I was with the steak off. You guys had like an open flame near that propane tank. Oh, yeah. And I was like, if this thing gets close, like... You watch I too don't many wanna, movies. Yeah, I probably do. Well, yeah, I mean, th there's always going to be a flame near a propane tank. That's the purpose yeah. of a propane <laughs> tank, right? Were <laughs> I mean, you worried that the like you could, you could take the propane tank and like hold it over the flame? You could do that. I'm not doing yeah, that. Go I'm, ahead. I'm, I'm, I'd be in Barb's camp at that moment. I'd be like, I'm gonna stand over here while you do that. But if you can keep it near it, that's okay. I'd say another thing I use the the camping ones for. Oh, we see it. And also the blue uh, butane. I don't know if butane. They're probably small. I would say when I, I, when I see blue, well, I, don't I don't know why I think it's butane. What's the difference between prop and butte? I think butane is a liquid. I, mm, or it's I think it's just different chemical pressure? makeup. I don't know. When I feel my butane lighter, it's, it's like liquid comes out. I feel like that doesn't happen with protein. Can propane. we get uh, Hank Hill on the phone? Is yeah. Is that possible? I don't know. I should just say simply I don't know because I don't know the difference <laughs> between butane and protein. How's the, uh, the protein pancakes coming out? They're going on. Why are they red? Hey, Trevor. Hey, guys. What's up, Matt? Trevor, get the fuck out of there. I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, the the butane one I have because I learned this lesson uh, when we were on Laser Team. All the stunt guys or the VFX guys had this. Like there was a whole scene uh, that we cut where we had these. We escape on a gurney at one point, and uh, Colton Dunn is pushing us with his speed boots. Did we cut that? We cut. We cut. We cut the scene where we showed up somewhere else, and there was the trail of flames oh. from where we had left our like. Path when we were running so fast on this gurney, um, but they had to like light the parking lot of this place where we went, which was a convenience store. It's a cut scene from the movie, probably the most expensive scene, and also the only scene where I got hurt and my stuntman got hurt. So <laughs> and they cut it, and and one of the only ones where Gavin used the phantom camera in the whole thing. And for I, some reason, no, I didn't use it. Oh right, 
because we lost one of the shots. That's why <laughs> I, I got was hurt. using it. You would have lost. That's the shot. why I got hurt. Was because we lost one shot and had to do it again. But um, that is some precision placement right there. The uh, nose? that looks like a peanut Ooh, butter are cookie. You, are you doing a penis? Uh, blueberry nose. Is blueberry that the protein nose. one? Because it looks gross. Could I make a pancake for Trevor? They're 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 the pancake looks pancake? super it. flat. I'm almost like. Like, like not burpee, inside. but I'm like <laughs> making this. Could you walk could I make one? <laughs> what is that? Could I make one for Trevor? Please do. Can you mix up some some yeah. mix? Uh, what I learned on <laughs> the set of Laser Team, that is and awesome. I don't know why I never thought that about is it before, totally is <laughs> you can get just for one of those either camp gas canisters or the blue ones. Uh, I think they're designed for the blue ones. You just get like a thing that screws onto the top of it with an igniter, and it's just like a handheld blowtorch. Mm. And they would use that thing for fucking everything. And I'm like, why am I messing around with lighters and matches? I'm just gonna do this. And it's I have those in my house now. I just have this thing. You get it out from under the sinker in the garage and go. It just goes. It makes that noise. But I'm now like you that. have a bunch of empty cans. Yeah, but now I have empty cans rattling <laughs> around my trunk. So that's that just does put cause in that a problem. Same recycling bin that the so uh, pancake. Oh yeah, the pancake through. bought recycling bin. Yeah, so recycles everything. Butane is C4H10. Propane is C3H8. The boiling point of butane is 30.2 degrees. The boiling point of propane is negative 43.6. So propane is always a gas. Yeah, you're probably always on gonna. Earth. Encounter Usually. it as a guy. What, what is the coldest? I was, I was almost right there. Yeah. I was close I'm, to being I'm right. I'm kind of backing you up. Oh, look at that. You were right adjacent. Happen, happens like with the, Like with the an Antarctica, <laughs> Antarctica discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan had an absolute nightmare at the airport the other day. He was Damn. here, went back to England, and there's a BA flight direct <laughs> Austin to London Heathrow. Beautiful. He, he asked me what time you should get to the airport, and I fly from Austin all the time, so I was like, probably like an hour. Yeah, it's international. I, I've got to the airport like 15 minutes before a flight and still made it on and stuff. International flight? Yeah. Kind what of time of year that. was this? Was this this was Thursday. But I feel like Dan is the kind of guy who checks a bag. Like he shouldn't be, but I feel like he would be a person who checks a bag. He's Just, actually, he's good at traveling. Is he good at He didn't check a bag. So I asked him, I was like, Military. you got a bag? We can, we can ruck it and go. Uh, so I was like, a couple hours, you got a bag? He's like, no, carry on. He's like, say an hour then. He got there about an hour and 10 minutes before the flight. And uh, they closed the check-in. Why? Apparently, there's, a, there's only one flight a day on British Airways. So once they've got everyone through, that they think, they just piss off. Yeah. Just so there was nobody Seriously, there? I just, no, I dealt with this. They just leave the check-in yeah, area. they're just gone. And, and uh, he, he was there, like, trying to check in. And um, then there's nothing you can do. There's no one to call. The, and, and the machine... I can't The machine doesn't work because they, I guess they've closed it for yeah. them. So he's like... Trying to get through, he was talking to American Airlines next to him. American Airlines are calling because they apparently just moved through and just go to the gate. Uh -huh. They weren't answering the phone at the gate, and their American Airlines were just like, "Can't help you." So, so then he was like, to? "So he called me. He's like, I'm gonna have to stay another day." So I was like, "No, no, no. check in on the app. See if the app works." And right? He hang up and again. Smart man. He's like, "The app doesn't work. I've missed the window." And he still has at this point about an hour and twenty minutes or an hour and twenty five minutes before the flight takes off, and he just can't get through. So then. He calls me back again, and I was just like, can you just go and buy a flight on American Airlines, like a flight to Dallas? Yeah. And he was like, hold on. <laughs> so he went and bought a flight, 250 bucks to Dallas, went through security, and then just went to the gate. Oh, he went to the BA for, gate? For British Airways. And checked in at the gate. Yeah. Did, did he buy a refundable fare? I don't know. He, I assume he bought it in a panic. Wait, so he, why he, did he need to check in at the gate? Because there was nobody out. There was they no leave, one in who they could leave check the in. ticket booth at the in the lobby. That's before security. Yeah. After an hour and ten minutes, I've dealt with this flying over there. I think for RTX, um, if you get there like an hour and fifteen or an hour and ten before the flight, it's well after the two hour window they tell you you should be doing. Yeah. So they literally just leave. They, but they, don't you have the ticket on your phone? Like, can't you just? He go didn't. Check, he didn't check in, in in advance, so, so he, he didn't have anything. So then so he, he just goes to the. Even though, was, like the screens, you can't use the screen. This, None they, of that they works. Well, it. Uh, and also Fuck. because. Want me to flip it? Or you want to flip it? I'm gonna go look you what's going on over there. British passports and stuff. Sometimes you need to put an extra information. Hey, uh, uh, Trevor, I'm flipping a heart shaped pancake for you, but it's uh, it's no, it's a bar minute. So, I made it. Oh, I'm not trying to send you any messages. Well, Look at that right, barb. That's really good. Ooh la la. I nailed it. So are you allowed yeah. to buy plane tickets snowman. intentionally not using them? Well. They're uh, probably not. Because <laughs> a guy, listen, if you're an American Airlines security <clears throat> person, a dude just came in, who's got a, a foreign passport, came in, <laughs> bought a ticket on a domestic flight, and now we can't find the guy. I mean, literally, that's a weird scenario. Do you yeah. think that security. flight to Dallas got really fucked because of him? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know. Like, they're just like, we're missing a passenger. It showed yeah. that he checked in. They were probably <laughs> saying, you know, Daniel Grucci, <laughs> yeah. uh, final call. Unless he just canceled it on the other yeah. side. It's, like, maybe he just called him. It, come on. 
Do you think Dan's doing that? I don't know. <laughs> no, absolutely But not. also, I mean, we've learned this. It's very easy to miss a, f a flight that you are checked in for and you're at the airport. Yeah. We, like, we almost missed our flight because we were just drinking in the lounge. <laughs> we both thought the other one was paying attention. And I'm like, hey, our plane <laughs> leaves in like 10 minutes. <laughs> started boarding 20 minutes ago. There we go. How are we doing? Uh, that protein pancake over there is not looking good. Yeah, it looks shocking. Kind of, it looks <laughs> flat and kind of beige. And yeah, not the good kind of beige. No. Trevor, what would you like on it? Trevor, what do you want on your pancake? Uh, chocolate chips, chocolate, what do you got? Syrup? An extra we got, we got fruits, we got bananas, strawberries, blueberries, chocolate bananas, chips. strawberry, chocolate. Everything? Yeah. Syrup? <laughs> little, 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 little you, uh, Trevor Special. Bottle. Are you watching his diet now, Barb? I, A, because you guys are dating now, but B, because your mom's a nutritionist. Do you like... <laughs> Do you scrutinize he, the Trevor? He's actually really um, knowledgeable on all that stuff. No, he gives me that pancake. We we've actually been cooking more, which is nice because it's something that I didn't do a lot. Uh, it's not bad when I lived on my own. Yeah, and so now it's easier to kind of cook when I it's for two people, it's not just easier. myself. Yeah, yeah. And also, for one sucks. It you know, waste sucks. As much. And you never want to do it because you're like, I'm just gonna make this, eat it, and then just, just gonna be this mess of shit. It, it's always cheaper to eat at home, right? Absolutely. It's always cheaper. cheaper to eat at home, I think on an individual basis, like on one meal basis, if you just compare the cost of that meal uh, to eating out at home, then it seems great. But what you don't ever get to calculate for is all the extra stuff you have left. So what I found is if you have a very few people in your house, like one person living alone, when you go to the grocery store, you're basically committing to eating one thing all week long. Otherwise, you're just wasting food. Like mm -hmm. if you order, if you get hamburger to have a cheeseburger, on Monday, and then you want fish on Tuesday, you're gonna end up with some hamburger left because they don't sell hamburger in one patty. You know, you're gonna have some hamburger left. So you either have to eat hamburger the rest of the week until it's gone, or you're kind of breaking the whole system because you're throwing away a bunch of unused yeah. hamburger meat. You know? um, or cheese, There's or lettuce, or onions, or whatever. And what if you wanna buy butter? I don't think I've ever used all of an onion. Pancake. Luckily, butter lasts for, for a really long period of time. Until you have to give it away. It's a heart. Until you're moving. <laughs> I was moving. I was. I don't want to start this. Did you show up Tuesday, Gus? Not did, today. Did you see of old days, Gus? <laughs> did you see that? Uh, no fighting today. Tesla finally announced they're going to be selling the thirty-five thousand dollar version. That's the Holy of the Grail. Three. Yeah. The, of the electric car. The why is it the Holy Grail? Thirty-five thousand dollars is uh, like considered to be an economy level car. I think at this. Point. Yeah, it's it's what they've striven for since they started Shit the company. Lights. They always wanted to try to hit a thirty-five thousand dollar car, which. They consider it was something they they could sell mass market. Main street. That's, sell it's a five hundred dollar car, I'll be impressed. Tesla. Well, nobody sells a five hundred dollar car. What here. is economy like at this point? Like when I think of an economy car, no, no, economy cars are way cheaper. I was thinking like that. twelve. Yeah. Well, used cars are the most economical. Yeah. But like for a new economy car, that's like twelve thousand. You can probably get by for like. I think maybe like eighteen now, right? I, I've seen some there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you mean I could potentially like, be a Tesla owner? You could. You could be a Tesla owner for thirty five thousand dollars. You could well, be. Oh damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got thirty-five thousand dollars like, tomorrow? You got some equity in your car. You can uh, you can sell your existing car. Yeah. Well, the Barb's takeaway from that story was, oh, they lowered the price. You can be an owner if you have the money. Oh fuck! <laughs> I, I, I watched. Uh, I read an article. I don't know what I was expecting from the headline, but it, it was this couple, and it was like, here's the secret to not working. Here's how you can get by without a job, and we're in our thirties. So I was like, how have they done this? And basically, the article comes down to uh, just make sure you spend every year less than a twenty-fifth of your net worth. What? It's like, oh, that's easy then. Just get a shitload of money, money. and then yeah. don't spend much. How is that? How is that news? How is I, that an article? I've seen articles like that. They're like, we retired when we were forty. It's like, <laughs> thanks to the fact we got a five hundred thousand dollar gift from our parents, we were able yeah. to do this. Like, well, they, yeah, no shit. Here was our they, tax strategy on that. They said with t with a bunch of kids, they were able to spend forty thousand dollars a year, like cheap meals, like Bull two dollars $2 per person. You still have to have a million dollars to do that. Yeah. Right. You can, uh, you can do 40. A lot of people do 40. For is, for kids? Yeah. Aren't kids there's, like... There are a lot of people who probably make between twenty dollars and $50,000 a year and have full families. Mm -hmm. You know, That's it can true, be done. Yeah. It can be done. I they heard... usually don't have a bunch of money sitting in the bank that they can use as a safety net. Yeah. If something seriously goes wrong, like health care or car or something like that. Wasn't there some stat... And I assume they're investing the shit out of all the other money. I would hope so. To get by. Wasn't there some statistic that was... <clears throat> Like said, the average cost of a kid per year was like a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Oh, I don't think it. It can't be that high. People don't have a hundred thousand dollars. No, I know. To spend that's why when I read that stat, this must I think, have no, been I think that's from ago. like to get it into college. Oh, like from like up. the when it's born to see you later is like a hundred grand. Wasn't that's that it? Sure. That would make more sense. Once you get past, <laughs> once you get past some pretty key expenses, 
kids kind of even out. Like, you gotta buy clothes for them, mm -hmm. but until they reach a certain age, they kind of don't care what they wear, so... But they do keep growing. Yeah. Like, the early, just the early stuff's expensive as shit, because they outgrow everything so fast. And you gotta buy stuff that you, you normally don't have to buy later, like, you gotta pay for diapers, and very special food, and things like that, for little, little kids. And then it, like, gets to this weird middle ground where it's just like... I'm trying to think, the, the biggest expenses for my kids were, like, 8 to 12, would have been trips. More than anything else. You Would know? it be unhygienic to just hang a baby over a bucket while it's awake? We knew a guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I was thinking the exact same thing. We knew a guy who his whole strategy for having kids was he was going to build one room in his house that had a cement floor with a drain in the middle. No. Like and, a wet room. Yeah, and then like, yeah, and then like rubber or vinyl walls. Yeah. And it would have in the top, it would have a hose that came down with like a spray handle on it, and they could just put the kid in there and spray off the kid. And, and spray he's in jail now? Spray <laughs> yeah, he's a very he practical individual. He didn't actually end up doing it when he right. finally had a kid. He died from he mold. That was his approach when, you know, your, your, your idea of having kids, what you're going to do when you have kids, is entirely different than when you actually have kids and the way you parent. They're Isn't two totally different worlds. The scariest thing, realizing you're about to be a dad, or like parent in general. What? Like, oh. just like if your entire life, every milestone that has happened, was that the scariest thing? Like that moment you realized? We were just talking about this with somebody, uh, I think we were talking with Michael on Off Topic. You were there. Yeah. And I said, the one thing you could say about parenting is that whenever you hear like, oh, like, Iris is now, what, 14 months? And it's like, oh, that's the best age. And parents will always say that, that's the best age. Because every age, you just remember all these great things about being that age. Right. It gets a little tough when you get into like real stuff in their teens, real, you know, which is like... All the social shit that everybody goes to, which is such a gigantic pain in the ass, and as a parent, it's a reminder to you of like some of that social stuff as well. But in general, no, it's like it's 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 daunting, but it really is one of those things that when you have a kid, you see the kid, you lay your eyes on the kid, everything changes all at once. Oh yeah, we like down on that here. pancake. What is that? This is my this is my uh, you were you were talking about your flat Earth documentary, so I had to make a visual representation of it. Do they stroke the globe the way that you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> They would if they could. What, what, I don't get What is the representation? Did you, are those continents? No, it's just a giant pancake uh, protein. <laughs> I was a, like, hey, would you actually draw them in there? That'd is be Antarctica on the middle, on the center of the flat Earth? It's edge. Yeah. Oh, it's the edge. Because that's just part touching oh, right. space, that's wall. all the it's ice. ice wall. So yeah. the, they the, think it's like an ice wall. So around. the circumference of Antarctica, ginormous, massive. How long does it take to walk around Antarctica? Because you, you don't it know. It those guys 48 days. I told you. We talked about this earlier. How many pounds of stuff do they have at the end? Uh, I forget. Because if they had like 30 pounds of stuff, it'd be like, motherfucker. I didn't need this 30 they, pounds. They, they, they talked about how obsessive they were with every single ounce that they had to carry. It's like they, they both decided they weren't taking any extra underwear. They had one pair of underwear that they were wearing. It's like, that's it. They can't take anything else. Just as far as making a face, you could totally do it. As long as you don't wear it backwards. You can totally do that. <laughs> Maybe not in Antarctica. Wait, how do you... Wait, one pair for the whole trip? Yeah. I think so. Mm. What about the stank? I, I, I don't think that... Or do you just not they sweat? They were sweating. It's not the same as guys, but for girls, things would get, like, crusty. It's You're true. always talking about your crust. Did you Every time. I'm not always You're talking always about my crust. You're always chatting about your vag crust. <laughs> Listen. Did you have to, could you use that pair of underwear you put on backwards? Could you use it again? You could use it four times. Front, back, inside, I'm saying, front, like, Or did you just throw that pair <laughs> away? I, I never, no, I didn't throw it away. I put it in the laundry. Well, you had the, you had the, the one pipe by the other pipes, and you should, like, it should be I assume, bad, bad news, right? I assume washing them takes care of that. Washing does usually take care of that. I, I guess, I, I, guess just, I mean, I'd be fine with it. It's all, all the holes are kind of close to each other anyway, so. I get poop in my vagina all the time. <laughs> I'm just, I'm asking, I'm asking theoretically here. All the time. You wipe uh, backwards. <laughs> I think I've said vagina crust maybe one other time on the podcast. And it was in context. It was. <laughs> That's fine. I'm just saying, uh, women have crust. things that secrete out of them. And if you're wearing the same pair of underwear day after day, it's going to get crusty. Well, I guess it would be frozen, so you just scrape it off. Yeah, you might not be secreting as much when you're in the middle of nowhere in Take Antarctica. Take ice picks. And like, oh, what, what? I, it, the temperature doesn't matter. It's just, uh... <laughs> it's just your body produces. Do you make it's spit your in your mouth with, when it's cold? Yes. No. What, you don't make spit in your mouth? Your, your mouth completely dries out. It dries out. You get... It's evolution. What temperatures did you his teeth? What temperatures are we talking, sort of, the time they were doing this in Antarctica? Right now there, it's a uh, negative 35 is the high, and negative 46 is the low, I believe, is today. I think it was somewhere in that range. Maybe yeah. a little, maybe a little warmer than that. Why do so, you know that? Because we, we actually looked it up today, we oh. were talking about it. 
uh, yeah, so it's brutally cold. I can't imagine doing that. I was things I would never do walk across Antarctica alone Antarctica is no, there I don't fucking money? head about it. Huh? Is there enough money? I, I think I would die like there's not enough money for that. Yeah, I don't think this I don't think there's any way I could do that So not million dollars, but no, no um yeah, no, no. Oh, and then I want to remind everyone that we have, uh, if you stay tuned after the podcast today, we have a, uh, a bonus segment with Zachary Levi. He was here. Oh, is that on this one? Yeah, we at the end of this uh, episode. He was here last week and we talked <coughs> with him uh, quite a bit. And I think in that, in the post show, we allude to a new Shazam trailer. That trailer actually came out today. So that trailer wasn't out when we talked to him previously. Right. So uh, we, we weren't able to see that, but. Official trailer number two. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that whenever Jeremy gets his face covered in some sort of goo. A really good looking woman comes and licks it off. Is that the secret? Aw, thank you, Gavin. What'd you do? You Shut licked up. off something off Jeremy? What'd you lick <laughs> off Jeremy? Oh, the peanut butter? The peanut butter. Well, uh, something I've learned at this company is when someone brings something to your attention, especially if there's a camera involved, yeah. and they ask you to do something, you just do it. Because who, who fucking cares? We, talk, we talked about that with the whole uh, speaker thing. I should have got in there. The RT Life we just did. And there was some controversy about the off-topic appearance. So we're like, oh, we have a rule at Rooster Teeth that I try to, try to explain to people, and I think I've said it before, which is when somebody comes up and they got a camera and we're shooting something, everybody just kind of goes with the bit. And if you go with the bit, the idea is, let's see if it turns into something. And if it doesn't turn into something or you don't like it, then you can say you want it to be cut. Look at you just lurking in the door. I was walking out and I saw you guys walking by and I was like, I don't know if I should go out there because I didn't want to interrupt. God, he looks awful. He looks yeah. like the peanut butter baby. Yeah, so we're watching a video. It's a Achievement Hunter video where it's between the games, right? Where they yeah. put an entire jar of peanut butter. He had a sandwich that was this massive sandwich. Ugh. That was a good lick. Had a little bit of trail there, too. I should have I should have gotten in there more. Do you know the other it. the other girl who licked Jeremy? It was Ashley. Yeah. Yeah, we had a long talk about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I just used it to make fun of her, basically. I said, oh, I see how it is. Oh, it's oh, Weems. Apparently, we can lick people at work. Hi, Sarah. Hey, what's up? Hi. Oh, and lovely Chris. Chris, you have a scarf on. You look dapper. Looks Thank a bit you. like Doctor I Who, doesn't he? For the pancakes. You look like Doctor Who. Wow. Todd, what are we making over there, bud? I make a dead cat pancake. <laughs> you gonna love it, boss. <laughs> a do dead we, cat. Do pancake? Italian gangsters <laughs> eat dead cats? Is that what I'm learning? Oh, and pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> are they chefs at Denny's? It's from the old country. <laughs> well, they're all <laughs> Catholic, aren't they? Smirnalia. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the one no, thing I always associate as being a very uniquely just European like, food that we wait? don't eat here um, is rabbit. Especially in places like France, they eat rabbit a lot. Mm -hmm. And we don't eat rabbit in the US that often. It's not weird, really, if like somebody, you heard somebody ate rabbit, you'd be able it's, to be it's like... It's an unusual menu item. It's just, an, it's a little, it's like on that line of animals that are friends and animals that are food, you know what I mean? And, and we kind of... I kinda, serves a, a rabbit. I do they? they do. Like, like I said, leg. not weird, but interesting. That's interesting that they serve it. I, I think a rabbit would be, if I was going to get into sort of killing and skinning animals and that, I'd start with a rabbit. You couldn't catch a fucking so rabbit. I know. You could. Uh, what, can we get what? a podcast segment next week where Gavin tries to catch a rabbit? How about not we, eat it, just catch it. How about we have <laughs> a, a podcast segment where there's a live rabbit on set and Gavin has to skin it? Mm. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Put your money where your mouth is. That's the, you think that's your intro? You think I, you'd I'll be able you, to do that? I'll tell you what. I, I, I want to see you look at a rabbit and actually do that. I was watching. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to rewatch all the Game of Thrones before it starts again. And we've just been introduced to Tywin Lannister in season one, and he's skinning that deer like while oh, he's right. doing the scene. That's his first ever scene, right? Yeah. And Great I just, introduction for that character. And I just, I assume he's skinning a real deer. It just looks real. But I, I just thought I just couldn't start that big. I'd have to start on a rabbit. Yeah, you could if you had to. There's I don't a, think I could do it. Rabbits are just too cute. There's a uh, you gotta snap the bones, which is what you can like snap the feet and head off. There's a, did you ever do the scene in Red Dead? It's optional. It's all the way up in the northeast side of the map, where and you can go back a couple different times. Um, where there's a woman up there and her husband got killed or is gone. Oh wait, her husband I think got killed by a bear. And then you go to inform her that yeah. her husband was killed by a bear, and then you kind of take her under your wing and show her how to hunt, and then. Without spoiling anything in Red Dead Redemption, years later, you can go back and like check on her and things like that. And it's, I, I, I liked it. Although, I think at one point he either shows her how to skin a rabbit or something, or just like grab it and like pull as hard as you can. Yeah. And just like, that's how you skin it. That's like a dangerous <laughs> thing to put out there. Cause people are like, I, I know I was thinking, 
Does that work? Does that, does that, does that <laughs> look like a big pole? Well, but, I guess if you get good enough purchase, if you get a, a few fingers in, you could just rip a whole skin off in one go. Right? Theoretically. I, I noticed on some animals when he's skinning, and tell me if this is creepy that I'm noticing stuff like this, and some animals he's skinning, he just does one cut and then he can skin it. Like, the skin doesn't seem to be attached yeah. in too many places, but some he's got to like, I don't know if it's the animation or what, but he's got to cut around the neck and everything. He's got to be real careful with stuff. Yeah, but yep. I mean, he never like cuts around the the hoofs and stuff. He, that's all like pre-done at all times. God, he does game. something that creeps me out every time he does it when he kills an elk or a moose and he pops their an antlers off. I just don't like that. I don't know why. I don't like does, that. Does anybody else watch? I don't even see that in a video game. Anybody else watch Dr. Pimple Popper on TV? <laughs> no, uh, not on no TV, but no. I've seen clips it, on the internet. It makes me think like you're talking about how things just come off like the skin there's sometimes where like she's taking stuff out and she'll like put her finger in and oh, like to loosen not. it and it's just like boom and it just like all comes right out no no we shouldn't be watching each other's pus and shit well this is like this isn't pus okay is what's that on? TLC TLC mm -hmm. okay so uh, like like pomos which are, they, they look they look just like globs of fat have you guys ever you know no. when you cut an avocado and you cut it <laughs> <laughs> you cut it in half and then you kind of like twist it apart and you got like the little thing in there. Never done it right in my whole life, but go ahead. You know what you could do? You could just fucking cut the skin and then peel the skin off of it. And it's perfect. You don't have to worry about the skin at all. And peel How the do you, skin you, you just cut the, the, mush. the stone inside? You still got the stone inside. You still got to cut it open, but then you don't have to deal with the skin at all. You peel that mushy, like it depends on the ripeness of the avocado, right? Well, you can just yeah. scoop it out with a spoon. You could, but then you don't get all of it because you still have to get into the skin. How do you eat your shit. kiwis? You leave the skin on, or you get it. You get it I out of kiwis. No, I've only delicious. ever eaten it with the skin on. I don't think I've ever seen it with the skin off. I've never seen it with so the skin maybe on. Maybe like fruit plate. A lot of people will yeah. cut it in half and like spoon out the the green meat. Hmm. Or can you not just... eat kiwi skin? You can. No, you can. It just it sounds so much worse than it is. It sounds like you'll be eating a bunch of fur, but it just goes down. It just feels like a peach skin. Like a peach, yeah. I love. Can't peach. eat the skin of cashews. It's like raw. You can't do that. They gotta process them. There's also a fish that if you don't prepare it correctly, it could kill you. It's a blowfish. Is yeah. it blowfish? Mm -hmm. Fugu. Fugu. But mm -hmm. it's actually it's like not as dangerous as it sounds. Oh, it's really? like the Simpsons episode. Apparently, it's like only, the only people who have died is just like fishermen who just ate the whole thing. Dude, there was a photo. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw this. This was a month or so ago. So, Gus, it was back when everybody was watching the Fire Festival doc. Okay, and, uh, I remember that time. Just, Fondly. Let's put it in your frame of reference here for you. Uh, it was a photo from Australia of a tourist, like an Instagram photo of them holding. A blue ringed octopus that they found. Oh god! And all the Australians were like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And it's like, I, I've seen the photo, and it's like this person holding a small blue ringed octopus. And that's what deadly. That one's got, if I recall correctly, Gavin. Yes, deadly. But the way it kills you is very specifically horrific, which is essentially para paralyzes. Oh. Is that where people have to breathe down your mouth for like an hour? Twenty-four until hours. <laughs> Oh, they have to, someone, you could survive if someone, because it relaxes or paralyzes all your major muscle groups. Oh my god, I'm watching your, it. Including uh, your respiratory. Yeah! I can't even look at it! That, that's not the one I think, but... No, I don't think it is it, actually. This, it is, this is the one it looks like. So yeah. yeah. Ugh. This is from January of, uh, of this year. So what is a it, tourist a in Australia has gone viral after posting a video of themselves holding a blue ring octopus. Uh, blue ring octopus is one of the most venomous creatures in Australia. The tourist is lucky to be alive. Think about that. Most venomous in Australia. Australia. A chilling <laughs> video, which appears to have originally from. posted to TikTok. TikTok! TikTok. We got TikTok making the news. Good for you. Found its way to Reddit, and then that's, I'm sure that's how you <gasps> found it. So that's like someone. I Todd has a uh, made a, a portrait pancake. Is it your. Oh that's my god! Oh, this is a dead cat pancake and died in <laughs> Australia. Why does it have a beard? It's a goatee. <laughs> He's going, oh no! <laughs> I don't understand, I don't understand I'm the narrative. I'm gonna be a dead cat to pancake! Oh it's no. interesting that that's what he went in with from the get. He could have, his, the world was his oyster. <laughs> he went with a cat. A, a dead, dead cat. cat. <laughs> the Italian dead cat. Very specific. It looks like a fox wearing sunglasses with a goatee. But this blue ring octopus, and someone can correct me, some toxicologist that I'm sure we have in our audience can, can, uh, can correct me. Flip it! Uh. It paralyzes all your major muscle groups, which means you can't breathe. So your heart still works, but you can't move your diaphragm to breathe, and you'll die because you basically suffocate. So, lasts for about 24 hours, so if you can just have someone who gives you mouth-to-mouth -mouth for 24 hours. Can you just be put on a... Yeah. Yeah, but assuming, like, normally we were envisioning a remote island situation where you're with someone. Could you give someone, uh, like, mouth-to-mouth -mouth for 24 hours? It's about six to eight breaths a minute, right? And but you can't stop for twenty four hours. That I would be. Do, I would do it to save someone. You would. I mean, I think we'd you all do, do it, your best. Try. It. try. Yeah. I, I think you would probably pass out. Yeah. Is there and enough? Die. And they'd, you, or they would die. Is there enough oxygen in a fart to save your life? If you were like stuck in an underwater cave, you're trapped, 
and the only air that someone could give you is to fart into your mouth, and you breathe the fart bubble, would you- would that buy you time? Well, if that's the case, then Blaine is a safety device. Because <laughs> he could keep all of us alive in like a cave or something like that. We'd be fine. So Probably I, not. I, I'm looking it up right now. What if you attach too a much tube methane? from your butt to your the, mouth? So in air, what, what are we looking at? Uh, so the air that we breathe right now so yeah, it's is 70% like nitrogen, isn't it? Right. It's 20.95% oxygen. So let's say 21% oxygen. Okay. A fart is about 4% oxygen. Yeah. Okay. And that's methane. So uh, fifty-nine percent nitrogen, twenty-one percent hydrogen, nine percent carbon dioxide, seven percent methane, four percent oxygen. Seven, that, that methane is doing a lot of heavy lifting in that fart. Oh, in the smell department is. Yeah. So does that mean if I had a bubble, it would have to be four times bigger than an oxygen bubble for it to be? Five, how much is enough five oxygen? Because four, four times five is okay. twenty. Yeah. yeah. Could you attach a tube from your mouth to the inside of your butt? And go underwater yes. and breathe. Oh, what's the rest of the question? <laughs> <laughs> and breathe through the tube. You're just like recirculating all yeah. through your body. <laughs> wait, 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 let me wait, tell wait. you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Does it go after you breathe it? You it, it, like, it, comes, out, the, it comes out your other head. Back into <laughs> <laughs> through your butt. <laughs> so we have some uh, some community submitted pancakes. Oh, we do. Oh, I see him. Ah! <laughs> that looks like Look a that. dead cat. It looks like a dead cat <laughs> with a hat. <laughs> Gus. <laughs> Angry Gus. Gus. Pissed. I got an apple. Do we get what? Yes. Are you, are you winking? <laughs> you got Pac-Man eye. Wait for it. I got some DSL. Wait for it. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Without the nose, I'm so impressed. The I hair's mean, going. I love it. That's what, great. What was that from? Is that an apple? so? We just saw we just saw portraits of pancakes that were portraits of me and Gus. Like apple. Gavin who, who made those, yeah. Tyler? That or might you, be the first time nobody's drawn a nose on me. At Miss Ovicious. At Miss Ovicious? Yes. Miss Ovicious? Miss Ovicious? Viscous. Thank you. Thank you. Those job. are awesome. There we go. So guess, cool. If it, how can people submit it? If, hashtag Pancake Podcast. I forget what movie this was. I want to say it was from the... Femme Nikita remake. Was that Bridget Fonda that was in that? Yes. Yes. I think it was from this movie. They did something in the movie that was like, as a teenager, I was like, they're fucking brilliant. Um, there was a thing where the bad guys are shooting at her and she drives off a dock and then the, the, the thing goes under. So they're all waiting up there with guns to kill her. And so she stays underwater when the car sinks. Was she like half the glove box or something? Close. It's, it's, uh, no, it's a uh, James Bond film. Is it? That's uh, You Only Live Twice, I think. Is it really? Yeah, it's it, Roger Moore. Mm -hmm. He drives and he breathes out of the, the valve stems from he, the tire. He, he breathes out of the tires. He like <laughs> hits the valve stem on the tire and sits under there breathing. That's we, James Bond? Yeah. Huh. We were just talking about James Bond. We're talking. Yeah, we were. We were just talking about James Bond films, of course. Yeah, that was. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was You no. Only Live Twice. I could be wrong about it, but it was definitely in that a Bond film. That movie really holds up, especially when uh, he, dr he dresses as an Asian. <laughs> yeah, well, that's also what we were talking about. There's, some, there's some of those movies are they're very uh, present <laughs> in oh, the cultural sense. It's very uh, it's problematic. Yes, B it's, Tornado is saying it was actually a View to a Kill. A View to a Kill. kill. So that was yeah. Roger Moore. So not <laughs> View to a Kill. That's the one with Grace Jones. Yeah, that was the worst Bond movie up until Die Another Day. Chris Jones is so fucking badass in that movie. I don't know how you can say that. Even Can't remember Ro anything else about the movie. Roger Moore was like, I hate this sign. movie. Yeah, I hated it. And also, he was like sixty. Did you read that uh, Brian Singer before everything fell apart was making a Red Sonia movie? You didn't tell me that, did you? Red Sonia? Remember Red Sonia was like in the Conan the Barbarian oh, uh, yeah. era from the mid '80s. There was a thing called Red Sonia. I don't think many people even know about the movie. They were doing a reboot of it or a remake. Hmm. It was like some kind of passion project, but <coughs> that's been shelved apparently. Do you do you ever have a movie in your head where, yep. as a kid, in this movie, I put a tube from my mouth to my butt, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I, I breathe, breathe underwater. For, I breathe for there are some scenes. twenty-four hours. From movies where that I swear were in when I was a kid, and now every version of the movie I no, can't find the scene. It, it, it's true. Um, who was it? Uh, I was talking with Esther recently. Like racist Disney stuff. And she was talking about how <laughs> when she was younger, she remembered in a Breakfast Club like all these scenes that aren't in the movie anymore, and uh, I, I had never seen them before. I had to look into it, and apparently, yeah, there used to be like three scenes in that film that were cut. There's just not in any uh, release anymore. So, okay, so I. Swear, do you remember Liar Liar the movie? Yeah, yeah. The, the movie ends where he's on a set of stairs driving after a plane. Don't remember that, but okay. Yep, and, and he's chasing he, after his son. He throws the shoe at it, and then eventually the plane stops, and he just plows this set of stairs into a barrier, and he just goes flying off the top. I don't and remember that part. Lands in luggage. All right, well that's in the movie. That's still in the movie, but 
as a kid, I swear, I remember a scene where the stairs are spinning around and he's like hanging off, like off by one arm. And then he goes into the luggage. I feel but like now, every single version of the movie I've ever seen since I've been a kid, he just crashes into it and goes straight into the luggage. And I don't, I can see the shot in my mind. You sure you're not confu confusing with some other movie? I was gonna no. say, maybe Ace Ventura? That sounds no, like No, that doesn't happen, and I swear, I, I, I know like the shot where it should be, and where it resumes again, and it's and it's missing, and have I don't know Googling where it? I've seen this footage. I've tried Googling it, I have no idea. But if anyone, anywhere in the world, has seen Jim Carrey spinning, off a set of stairs in Liar Liar. Let me know where the Christ that is from, because it's not in the deleted scenes on the DVD, either. All right. Or maybe I'm just losing my shit. And if you know anything about uh, retained deciduous teeth, did we have a picture of that? We sent. Oh yeah, we have Musha's uh, picture. So it's, this uh, could be gross right. if people don't like cat dental stuff. Let me see here. Oh, see, see that the, the oh, yeah, he's got double. He, he's got two fangs there. That looks cooler. I don't know. I can't really see it on the right. Oh, on the right, above that little, he got a little white dot on his gum, but above that, you can see the two teeth. For the bottom fat. Wait, what's yeah. below the two teeth? The little white dot? No. Wait. Yeah. Like the white- That's like a sideways tooth. I don't know what that is, actually. Is that his other tooth growing in? I hope not. Is that a piece of rice? Poor kiddo. No, it's not a piece of rice. He doesn't eat rice on Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> That's only for the weekend. Ah. Hmm. Oh, he cute. does not want his teeth touched, so that was- it. Ashley was- Many Bothans died to bring his that <laughs> information. Yeah. He was, uh, he was in a mood the other day. I think it was last week. I, uh, I had him in my office, and he was in my lap, and he was totally fine, and he looked at me. I must have looked at him wrong, and just like, he just took one swipe, just bam! Like, okay, I won't look at you anymore. He's like, really? right, on, right on the cheek. Really? <laughs> got me, got me good. I was like, alright, you're good. He, he's like, 90% a very chilled out, happy cat. The other 10% is a fucking, he's just a nightmare. He's a nightmare. So it's like, every now and then, you guys, I have like a bad hour with that cat, and I'm like, is this, is this Seamus, or is mm -hmm. he gonna be Joe the cat? What's he gonna be? But he's his own thing. He's like half. He's got a little bit of both. I think he's just he's a kitten. Kittens bite yeah. everything they come in contact. With. Mush in the street. Seamus in the sheets. What's going on over there? What do you got? Going I'm on? trying to find the stairs scene, but I also forgot one of my favorite moments in that movie too is when he hides himself in that luggage. <laughs> and he's, <laughs> he's just like, rolling out of it on the ground. That was prime Jim Carrey. Hell yeah. That's a very brown movie. Guess what, what I did? Is, what does that mean? What does that mean? It's just the color palette. That movie is brown. Uh -huh. Just every scene is brown. What'd I got a. Uh, I saw a video this weekend that I want to talk a little bit about. Um, first of all, first of all, but I hope nobody else has anything to complain about Apple for, but I just threw out, I was going through and did all this organizing. I think I talked about it in one of the last few podcasts where I'm doing spring cleaning, going through and fucking organizing everything in my house. Organized all my documents, organized all my pictures, got all my digital stuff down to one space and supposed to spread it across like 80 fucking laptops I've had over the years. Um, and I got everything all down, and then as a result of that, then started going through my physical stuff in the closets and organizing all that. Like, all my closets now have bins with labels on them, everything's in it, so I can find it. Which is a system I've always had, but I just hadn't kept up with it. So now I'm, like, fully up to speed. As part of that, I was separating all, all my different cables. I have a billion micro USB cables. I, I did the same thing recently. There's so many. Yeah, and I have, you know, lightning cables and stuff, and then it's like, when I was organizing, I came across my old... What I call the iPod 4 cable, the the the, the, the proprietary one before the one lightning. that was kind of like a like a thirty pin connector. Exactly right. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? I'm never gonna need these again. I'm never ever ever gonna need these again. And so I said, I'm gonna th I'm gonna make a decision right now. I'm gonna <gasps> throw them away. <gasps> he found it. No, he spins off of it. Like he like he crashes into it and he spins off of it, but, but there it's was never spinning. holding on. Thank you to Ryan is a champ. What's that from? Ryan is a champ in chat on the website said. It's in the official trailer. Uh, but it's not in the Let movie. Me see. Because in the There's a lot of stuff that makes it into trailers that doesn't make it into movies. There it is. Yeah, dude. Okay, so in the movie, it actually he he crashes it straight and he, spins. and he spins off it as if it has been spinning, but all the spinning is cut. Wonder why they why they even all right. So you're getting rid of your cables? <laughs> yeah, anyway, so I got rid of my iPhone 4 cable. Uh never gonna need this again. The day after they came and picked up the trash, I found an old iPod that I needed to charge up and see what was on it. Oh, I, man. I mean, so I had to go out and order no. a new a, an why iPhone 4 cable. Why not just fuck it? Like, why did you need to- I can't do that with data. Can't you just pull I just, the- I can't do that. You, you can just pull iPod? the hard drive out. Isn't that just music? Uh, iPod, or excuse me, did I say iPod? I meant iPad. 
So it's an iPad. Gotcha. And uh, so it's got, you know, male client and stuff. I don't know what it's got on it. Turns yeah. out, charged up, it's got nothing on it because I'd already fucking wiped it back <laughs> to factory <laughs> settings. So <laughs> they don't sell that cable new anymore, right? Like Apple doesn't make that. Did you have to buy that like from I, eBay? I got it, what do they call it? What, Amazon Basics. Oh, okay. And I just put it in with another order and then I got, I now I have this iPhone 4 cable that I had to buy Fuck. in 2019. So now are you going to get rid of it? Because I just threw it away. Or are you going to keep it? I don't know. Well, so you, what were you going to do with the iPad? I was gonna just check it to make sure that it's got nothing on it, wipe it and everything. Is I'm really bad. I don't tend to resell my electronics just because I'm always worried about data security. Not just for Rushi, but for our partners as well. We have to sign all these agreements anytime we do anything. Like even going to see this Captain Marvel yesterday. I don't have any data from it, but I constantly gotta watch what I'm gonna say because I'm not supposed to say anything about the movie being completely fucking awesome until tomorrow. So <laughs> I can't say anything about it. But we'll talk about it in the post show, and then when it airs tomorrow, it'll be okay to talk about how great the movie now, is. Now, no, now, no good. Tomorrow, no. totally fine. I can't. Yeah, you can't say anything about it being awesome. I can't say anything about it. Hey, speaking of awesome things, hey, I want to remind you, this episode of the Receive Podcast is brought to you by Stamps.com. No one really has time to go to the post office. You're busy. We get it. Who's got time for all that traffic, parking, lugging all your mail and packages? It's a real hassle. And that's why you need Stamps.com. Stamps.com brings all of the amazing services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer. Stamps.com is the faster and more convenient way to get postage. You can use your computer to print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send, and the mail carrier picks it up. No more lugging to the post office. It's the best. There's no equipment to lease and no long-term commitments. If you run a small business, uh, it'd be great for that as well. Uh, I use Stamps.com because I love how easy it is. Don't have to take time out of my day to plan for a trip to the post office. I can just get official postage right from my own computer. With Stamps.com, you get five cents off every first-class stamp and up to 40% off of priority mail. Right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. You can see for yourself why over 700,000 small businesses use Stamps.com. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Rooster. That's Stamps.com, enter code Rooster. Big thank you to Stamps.com for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. My face smells like spoiled milk. That's the wait, Honestly, the biggest downside to uh, getting whipped cream all over your face is that that will smell until you have a shower. It smells so bad. If the you have a beard, smell? it can last more than a day. This? It's amazing what does get it's trapped dairy, in a beard. right? Is it? L- stuff gets trapped in a beard. It is. Pussy. Get, listen, Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> Pussy what, crust. What about, what about dead cat? <laughs> it gets stuck in there. But I give you an idea of how careful I am with data and things like that. Whenever I rent a car, one of the things I'll always do is I'll go through the connected devices via Bluetooth. Yeah. And I'll see, like, people's devices are still connected. People who connected their car to Bluetooth or their phone to Bluetooth in the car. Um, they leave it and then they check their car back in and then their device is still there. But and does it, it matter say, if they're nowhere near it? It usually says their name on it. Because normally you transfer it. Yeah. What's that? Like I'm telling her, that it doesn't matter if they're near because normally it transfers to the car. Yeah, some, they, really? it, the mm-hmm. cars can grab information like off and store and stuff it. Contacts sure. and things Fuck. like that. So what that. I do is I just go through and I delete everyone else's Bluetooth oh, stuff. Oh, you're doing the world of favor. I am. Yeah. I do it every time I'm in the car. I delete everyone else's stuff. And that's what everyone should do. And I, I always wonder sometimes, you know, in those rental cars too, you can see... Like pre, like if you use the GPS, you see like previous destinations as well. Yeah, it's like if you really wanted to, you could you could like retrace the steps of this person. You probably could with GPS. It, yeah, it's really scary how much information you trust to the car without thinking about it, without with a, to a rental car without thinking about it. It's just one of those it. things. It's a weird source of information that you don't often think about. A rental car has a lot of information about you specifically in it. So be careful, even careful about stuff with, like with that. data. I invented a story because I was <laughs> invented a story. Well, in my head, I was like, well, that'd be like. You know, speaking of like flat earth and stuff, imagine if, right, normal spherical earth, ball earth, but gravity Allegedly. isn't in relation to the center of the earth. Gravity is at the bottom. So everything is down on the whole earth. So as you get like closer to the edge, you can actually just like fall off. But then it'd be like, People on top would be like all flat societies living, and then as you get closer to the edge, like it's slippery. They'd be like on the piss. They'd be, everything would be sloped, and I'd be like, "Well, what kind of people would live like right on the edge? It'd be cool looking." And then you'd get these like people on the lamb who would like climb underneath the earth. That'd be quite weird. Be weird, right? <laughs> you just, while <laughs> you were sitting there, you thought about all this stuff. I love it. Well, while you're doing the ad read, one of my favorite one of my favorite <laughs> parts that. of this flat Earth documentary was these people who um, were believers in this theory who um, I think was actually the guy who really started it all. And he was talking about how he's like, well, you see over there, like I'm all the way over here on this island and I could see Seattle right there. I could see it. And if the earth was round, 
or a sphere, I wouldn't be able to see it, it'd be curved. And me and Trevor were watching this being like, do you understand the scale of the Earth? Yeah. That's like, you in Europe. It's like, you can't see fucking New York from there. It, it it's was just, just cause they see a line. They yeah, see they're a like, well, I wouldn't be able right. to see Seattle right All you need to right do there. is just take someone up the tallest building in the world in a lift and watch as they can see further as they go higher. That, surely that would prove it. You would think. I don't think there's any proving it. You got called uh, some insults after you tweeted it. Yes. Am I allowed to say it? More? I don't, <laughs> what happened? So, yeah, there's a very derogatory term that I guess flat earthers have come up with for people who don't believe flat earth stuff. Yeah. So I tweeted uh, while we were watching the documentary that I was just like in disbelief the whole time. And uh, someone replied to me saying, that's because you're a globe tard. Mm. It's like believing in a. Like Scientific you could be insulted fact. for believing in. A, a round earth. But then I don't know if they were spiracles. doing it out of jest or if that person is a flat earther. I have this conversation with my kids all the time. In this day and age, there's no such thing as acting ironically. If you do something out of to be ironic and you act it and you say the insult and everything, you're doing the thing. You are doing the thing. Like if, if you were wearing a MAGA hat. Like if you get on a Xbox Live microphone and you start like talking in a stupid cool. voice and yelling at everyone, but you're doing it ironically, you're really not. <laughs> <laughs> You're just someone who's on Xbox Live, you know, part being, of the problem, being a dipshit. Yeah. So that's why that's, that's what I think people have to realize is that you, you, no one's gonna stop in this day and age to figure out the context of whether or not. You're being ironic. That guy is a flat earther, right? And I don't know. Be. I went to his Twitter feed to try to see if he has tweeted anything else about it, and I couldn't find anything. Fucking boring weekend for Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> she did investigate. I had to investigate. I didn't producer. know. I, I wanted. I, I do know how that when you watch a doc, you get so involved with stuff, and you gotta like dig deeper on it and yeah. find out. Yeah. Can was, I? Can I do a test? Can I s consume as much flat Earth as possible and see if it turns me? I. I just need one of you guys to pull me back. I it don't happens. think it's possible for. At least anybody that I know in this <clears throat> company, I think to believe it. It's like those Facebook people we were talking about. I think if you see enough of it, you you, you start to lose objectivity. Well, and we did get in the yeah, conversation. I've seen a lot of stuff, and I'm not, you know. We got in a conversation about that too, which I got some negative <clears throat> feedback for, saying that I was being anti freedom of speech because Gam was saying you got to keep that stuff out there, and I was making the argument of well, I'm we saying know, it's we, a gray we, area. We couldn't have envisioned like how people could weaponize. Language and you know information, you know, and I was I wasn't saying there should be limits on free speech I actually think the opposite is like let people say whatever they want to but you got to be able to say that person's a fucking idiot mm. You know and they're they're fucking idiots. They're idiots people who are anti-vaxxing are fucking idiots mm -hmm. People who think the earth is flat are fucking they're just fucking idiots the anti-vax stuff is the scariest stuff so I freedom, feel like freedom of speech is a two-way street man. I feel like flat earth doesn't necessarily hurt a ton it's of people. It's not hurting anybody but not Except getting bullshit. Your, not getting people's people's I disagree with that entirely. It's fucking anti-science and it's like a little like a little chip away at you. Oh, you shouldn't believe this because they want you. Why? Why are they making up this lie? You know, you these that. are scientists that work on this. There's fucking astronauts. There's people that know that the Earth is a fucking sphere. Yeah, but people don't die directly because of it. But they could die like it could, if it erodes the public's trust in science. In yeah. other it could be dangerous on a, lar on a scale. It doesn't hurt people. Time. So what? So I can't say they're fucking idiots? Or you're saying I, they still have to be able to say it? I think you're saying which one's more dangerous of a theory. I, I'm or saying that anti-vaxxers are more dangerous to humanity than the flat that. earthers. I agree with that. But, but I, I mean, think you should be able to call people a fucking idiot. Yeah. If they're both- <laughs> they're all idiots. They're all There's idiots. There's no questioning that. God, the fucking anti vaxxers You can stuff. question it though. It's fucking crazy, dude. It's really fucking crazy. Anybody else want another pancake? I feel- uh, yeah, Why sure. don't you make a- a big rectangular pancake? Oh god. <laughs> Yeah! I don't know how this is gonna work. I'm gonna go see oh, the there's a one. drain! Ooh, can we I'm make gonna, a pizza I'm gonna make myself a pancake over there. Alright. Okay. Gus, you keep leaving us. Oh no. I was just talking about being wasteful. <laughs> no, we'll get it down. I'll tell you what, man. That Fire Festival documentary... Oh my god. Every time I step over here, you bring it up! <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you... Gus, it had a real impact on me. I'm, I'm not really stressing enough how much of an impact it had on me. Just because it was like, the whole thing was just like... So, even hearing the way the guys talked about their... Audience or their 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 target market. They were like talking about them like they're just idiots. You should watch the Hulu one. Good lord, dude. Because apparently there's a very big difference between yeah, I need to the see Hulu the Hulu and, one and Netflix. Well. Because I think the Netflix one was co-produced by people who actually were involved in Fire Festival. D dude, this one the, the fuck Jerry. The Netflix one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think what they the, were involved. What the fuck in is the that? Is that destination now? No idea. It's basically just like. Uh, Jukin Media or something where they 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 well I guess Jukin Media pays rights they pay rights for stuff no I think fuck Jerry just 
repost a bunch of other they, stuff. That, they just steal like, content. And they then, just steal content, yeah, right? They don't yeah. give any credit. And then whatever, I just couldn't you. believe how quickly he went back to scamming. Every one of my fucking comedian friends can't stand that it's a Instagram account. So do they, I, I, I haven't seen the it. Netflix one, but do they interview the founder of the Fire no, Festival at length? Oh he's yeah. He's only in the Hulu one. The, oh no, you mean the Billy guy? Yeah. No, they, they, but they have people there that are, that are high up in both the festival and then the company Fire, which was totally different than Firefest. Fire Fire was an app. Yeah. Right. That was meant to be able to book <clears throat> big name talent for events. Right. That was the whole thing for it. And even after all this shit went wrong, Ja Rule, who was part of it and investing in it, uh, he goes off and just makes that app again somewhere else. So he gets to keep <laughs> doing that. The other guy, Billy, goes to jail. I think like, wasn't he wasn't Ja Rule in the news again like last week talking about wanting to do a new festival? Really? Was yeah, he? I think he's like he's still at it. He, there's been no less. He came across there. as pretty damn aggressive in that Netflix one. Well, yeah. the thing about the Hulu one where they interview this guy, Billy is his name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is just completely psychotic, and he like is a uh, what's the word? Uh, pathological liar. That's the word. Yeah, just he like he's saying these things and denying all these things that are just so clearly true. That he's so out of his and mind. And people trust him, and people give him shitloads of money. Yeah, yeah. and it's insane. Like that woman. I need another spatula. Can we get the second spatula? Do you want to use this? this? I don't think the spoon's going to work. I think, I think I need two spatulas. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I'm going to cross my arms like this, and then a couple. Why, why are you going to cross the arms? Because I'm going to go like this. Shoomp. But you could do it the other way. Yeah, but it's easier to do it. You got more control pre-crossed? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Here we go. This is going to be, dude, if I do this. No. If, okay, get ready on the gifts. If, this is going to be tremendous. This is going to burn me. Oop. Get off there. Wait. Get off there. You gotta find the- Yeah, Barbara, this is actually going your direction, so. I know. So oh, your turn, your oh, turn. okay. Wait, wait, wait. I can save this. Your turn, your turn. I know, I know. Okay. I'm tearing everywhere. All right, ready? One, two, three. Gavin, I've always loved you. Oh! oh! Fucking nailed yeah! it! Yeah! Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. made a- You made a desert. I filmed that in slow motion for you. Hey, that uh- was wicked. But there was something said in the Fire uh, Festival doc. That I take great exception to because I've seen these like massive frauds and I think that it's fair to call it a fraud using my freedom of speech because the guy did go to jail for wire fraud. I think of one of the many charges that he was yeah. convicted on. Um, there was the conversation about people who worked on the app side and then some people who worked not for fire but worked on the festival. They were like promotional companies or event coordinators or logistics that worked on them and they had a lot to say and they really seemed like really intelligent people. But one guy, and I can't remember specifically what his role was, said at the end, yeah, a lot of people uh, were, you know, built out of their money. A lot of people didn't get paid. A lot of people were ripped off and fraud. And he goes, and I have to say, when people get paid, they have to keep in mind that the employees, we worked here every day for years and we didn't get paid, that we should be the first people to get paid. It's like, dude, you're in the fucking loop. You're right. there. You know the thing but, is not right. But, but they keep claiming that they didn't know. That, that was all segmented and that it was all the other group that was doing it. Dude, I all the it's, it's the same it's the same thing that comes down to the difference between the, the Netflix and the Hulu one. The Hulu one puts a lot more culpability on Jerry Media, whereas the Netflix one, they just say like, oh, we didn't know. Yeah, because they're like a co-producer. Right. They have some involvement in you're it. You're in the it's fucking meeting, you're on the conference calls where people are going, This is not gonna work. There's one guy, there's some pilot guy who was also working on their logistics, who he said, Hey, you you can't do this. This island will fit this amount of people. You gotta have a cruise ship off the shore of the island. And they were like, Yeah, you're fired. And he's like, okay, you can't hold, you cannot possibly make this festival. It can't be done. And they were just like, yeah, get out of here. And everyone was probably like at the time was like, yeah, this fucking idiot. He doesn't get the building vision, <laughs> you know. And now, now they're all talking about it. same thing as Enron. They always, they always use the people who worked at Enron specifically as like those people lost their pensions and lost their stock options at Enron, and they got ripped off, and they should be the first people to get paid. It's like, no, they they had the most amount of information of anybody. Right. You know? I'm not saying they shouldn't. I'm not saying they weren't victims. But if you work somewhere all the time and something is going wrong, you do have a responsibility to say something You, you would it. hear something. You feel like you would know something was, was exactly. up. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, think about where you worked. Is there a lot of stuff that, like, makes it under the radar where you work? Or do people talk about shit? People mm -hmm. can talk about shit. You know? And in the case of this Netflix documentary... Almost every person who was involved with the thing said at one point, it's like, yeah, you know, we got on this call and this thing was falling apart. Or this cab driver said, there's no way this is going to get built in time, you know, on the islands, Exuma, where they were holding it eventually. And uh, yeah, it's crazy. I feel really bad for the fucking uh, workers, construction workers that worked in Exu the island Exuma. Workers? Yeah, and they all just went unpaid. They had a, a GoFundMe for the restaurant owner who's in that documentary. The, the lady? The yeah. woman? Yeah. To try to pay her back. I liked she her. 
She also lost a lot of money on that as well. And well, this people you talk about who they don't know. Like, they don't even work for that stuff. They're just there. There's auxiliary people who are who are there on the island. You want some whipped cream? Literally the biggest pancake I've ever made. I think that's bigger than most people's pancakes. Do we have Guinness on the phone? Stop. Give me flashbacks <laughs> to my older brother. You could roll it into something cool. Let's see. That's almost like a crepe. It's like a fat crepe. America. Oh, it's this like is a loaf. <laughs> when you roll it up like this. <laughs> oh my god. It looks like a burrito. It's so hot. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> you want a bite, Gaff? Uh, sure. It, it's pretty hot. So I'll, I'll wait there. Wait till it cools down. Coming Burn off yourself. there. All right, that's it. That was that's my greatest work in life was flipping that pancake. So super. I'm glad we got it on camera. camera. I'm glad that uh, that we saved that. Oh bullshit! You were hoping no, it was gonna go completely so wrong good. and I was getting covered in pancakes. Either way, we would have been a good video. Yeah, that's all. How that much matters. for you to oh, eat? I'm just gonna sit here and I'm just gonna huff it. How much for you to time. eat that entire thing? To eat the whole thing, yeah. I'd have to throw up first and then after as well. But, but I take I I really can't stress enough how much watching this documentary affected me. It really did full grand. genuinely affect me. Oh. It, it's like and I can't, I don't really know entirely how it's affected me, but I can't stop thinking about it, and I just can't. Did, did you say you watched it this weekend? Yeah. You want to have a festival now? No, no. I mean, we have RTX. You know what I mean? It's not and a it's festival. Like, what? Not you're a this? festival. Sure is. Hey, There's speaking no of RTX. <laughs> 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 you could have done it from over there. there. <laughs> Listen up. <laughs> RTX Austin 2019 will be here sooner than you think. Will you be there? Weekend passes are available right now at rtxaustin.com. We can't wait to see all your beautiful faces July 5th to 7th at the Austin Convention Center for the greatest Chuck animation, Chuck. gaming, and comedy event in the world. Uh, RTX is a great place to go meet other people who are fans of Rooster Teeth and uh, just you know celebrate everything that we love. We My ex-wife, show. her favorite thing about Rooster Teeth is RTX. She <laughs> she didn't she didn't get in her own words a lot of it, but she RTX she fucking loves. Super great. Comes energy. every year. She should come down. Uh, so head over to RTXAustin.com right now. Pick up weekend passes for you and your friends, uh, or even if it's just you by yourself, come hang out with us, the greatest community on the planet. That's July fifth to seventh. At RTX Austin, you'll have a chance to see this podcast on the spa, Woo-hoo! always open, off topic, live, uh, plus RTX Animation Festival, special guests, big surprises, amazing cosplay, world premieres, and so much more. <laughs> That's RTXAustin.com. Do not miss it. It's, Gwen uh, Stefani, Taylor Swift. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> God. But it's just like, it, it's just like they just didn't care about like duping everyone. And the whole thing just seems like even the premise of it was just like, you know, they saw the success it looked like of Coachella and other events that were grown organically over years. And they're just like, we're going to do that. And we're going to, but we're going to do it like over the top. We're going to cater to people's like modern day Instagram. Yeah. You know, it was basically, Kardashian fantasies of just like yachts and villas and all that stuff. It's just like influencer culture that they basically. Yeah, it made all those influencers look like shit. It really did. I, I, know. I just can't believe how far they got. With so little time left, how much money they were still pouring into it. It would have been so much better if they just cut their losses earlier. I don't understand that part. Like, they talk about how, I forget if it's in that documentary or the, or the Hulu one, how 45 days from the event, they still didn't have a stage. And it's like, and you're supposed to be hosting all of these bands, and like you don't know how your stage is going to work or where, how things are laid out or what your equipment is. And well, and people were arriving while they were still trying to set up things, so it just looked like a construction zone. And then, then you've got, like, the, the end-of-the-world apocalyptic chaos that humans always go into in those situations. Right, they started, like, I mean, there was even people who admitted weird stuff on camera, like attendees mm. saying they went and peed on people's beds so that people couldn't camp near them. Like, it was just, there was not even a rhyme or reason that for be, that. That should be criminal. Yeah, I'm surprised that guy... Uh, well, maybe we're not surprised, but uh, that guy made a mistake. I think by saying that on camera. Like, yeah, what's, what's I know the, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I was, what's the I was crime shocked. there? Yeah, why is that illegal? Because I mean, there's not enough housing. Like you're you're making someone. I don't know who's gonna who's gonna prosecute him though. I mean, like the Bahamian police are gonna prosecute him. I guess they have other issues to worry about. I mean, yeah, surely the going with the intent of sucking a dude's John Thomas for a, a, what it, like a customs fee. Yeah, that's that can't be legal. Uh, no, but it didn't happen. Didn't happen, but he intended it for it to happen. Yeah. I don't know if, yeah, intent. I don't know if it's like conspiracy to commit blowjob. I, don't I mean, know that's, that's how they got Tom Cruise in a <laughs> <But> Minority Report. <laughs> <laughs> Who's not guilty of that? Come on. The, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> I intended to blow someone. <laughs> the, uh, but the, uh, yeah, the, the thing I always come back to was I can see how people get wrapped up on it. The Bahamian lady who ran the restaurant. And also the events guy, the, I think his name is Andy, the guy that said he was preparing was Andy, to yeah. suck that dude's dick. It's like, you could see them, they gave the best case of just like, the Bahamian woman said, 
You know, this was supposed to be here for five years. If I do a good job on the first one, I have a job for five years. That's a really big deal to me. So she was, and she lost money, man. We're talking about her, like, losing her savings, mm -hmm. like, investing in that. I don't put her in the same boat as the people who were working in these fancy tech offices on the conference calls. I don't think they had her on any of the fucking conference calls. But uh, her, and then Andy was like, when he was talking about it, he was like, yeah, this is impossible. can't happen. But he talked about Woodstock specifically. Woodstock... And it might be a sign of the times. If you looked at Woodstock with the right lens, that thing's a fucking disaster. People died at Absolutely. Woodstock. Was it drugs? They were stuck on the freeways for days at days at a time, getting there and getting back. It was this small little town that all these people showed up at, but it's remembered as this huge cultural event. And I, I'm I'm glad they made that point because it, sometimes it really is just if you pull it off. Then you're remembered well. Yeah, I, well. I never thought about it in that. Never in that. No, they didn't have any, perspective. They had no sewage at Woodstock for three days. Mm -hmm. I have a great idea also, for though, you're, you're, you're like you don't know how people are going to remember Fire Festival in ten years. P that guy might be remembering it fondly when he was pissing on all those other people's tents. He might be like, "That was great. It was a great time." Oh, I, I said just like, <laughs> after Fire Festival fell apart, I wish I'd gone because that would be amazing <laughs> to say, "Oh, I was at Fire Festival." You know, I have an, an idea for RTX this year. It's like DashCon. Go on. That has something to do with it. We oh. should have an area of the exhibit hall where you could experience other festivals. Like little so like a biomes of festivals? Like a dash con area where it's just that ball pit and then like a fire festival mm -hmm. where it's like a FEMA tent, tent. With like a, what was it? A, the, a, cheese, sand, a cheese, cheese and bread or... <laughs> with a slice of tomato or whatever they had there. Get the full experience. Yeah, we could just have people stand in the parking lot for TanaCon, and then we could put on like <laughs> oh, yeah. put fucking heat lamps on them while they're out there. We don't too. need the heat lamps. It's gonna be July here, dude. I that that was like I was close enough to that because that's our industry that I was I was. Weren't you at? I was at VidCon, VidCon yeah. which was it was in response to VidCon. Executing events is so difficult. Yeah, it's one of those things where I think you look. Even when we started RTX, I think we were like, oh, this will be easy. We we've been and we had been to events for years, and as exhibitors and as attendees, we thought we'd know how to do this and. It's not easy. This, no, let me tell you something. All. This uh, fire festival doc coming out is actually really, really bad, I think, for those people because you watch that doc and one of the guys being interviewed is an attendee and you're like, well, why the fuck is this guy giving away all this information about how he got duped, you know, and he got suckered into this thing? It's like, I wouldn't want to go on camera. I just want to put it behind me. But then the, the, the documentary is like, yeah, and I want a $5 million judgment against him. Probably won't get any of that money, but they don't say that. I mean, because there's no money Mm -hmm. left or no yeah, there was never any from? money to begin with one of the things they started with was the fact they bought this island but then they glossed over this so quickly in the documentary they bought this island but then the owner of the island kicked them off of it with three they mentioned weeks left Pablo Escobar right but if they bought the island how does the owner have the right to kick him off see it's all like oh. yeah. shady like half truce and I think just like in that. their promotion they said they bought the island but, but they would somebody who went to Tanacon and was stuck in that parking lot, or one of the people got wheeled away in the ambulance, uh, they're going to see this fire festival doc because it's kind of, you know, loosely connected to their experience, and they're going to hear that $5 million judgment. They're going to be like, oh, I'm going to do that. Yeah. You know? And I'm sure they've already probably had people talking to them, so I think it's really bad for them. I really do. We have, uh, on a slightly different topic, we have another pancake. <laughs> another user-submitted pancake. Let's see it. Oh, that's a cool oh, setup. Nice. Who's fireplace? Look at fireplace. Got TV over it. At and incorporated. Thank you for sharing your pancake, your romantic fire lit. I can't see the pancake. pancake I know, it's, but it's I, I, the small. setup is all. I think Gavin is a perfect that's, time for Gavin to eat his pancake. His massive rolled pancake. So I'm, I'll have a bite. It's like a burrito. I just want to burn myself. Okay, it's, I think it's cooled down by now. Can I tell you something that we do with this company that I don't like? It's just the sheer size of the company, this big, enormous pancake reminds me of it. Is we now do this thing where we celebrate people's birthdays all at once uh, for a yeah. month. I don't do you, I don't like that. No. That seems like I'd rather not do it. Delicious. Is it good? Who wants some? No, I don't. It sounds How much is that way, Barbara? Sounds like you'd be chewing that. I'd say this is like a good two, well, three pounds. Wow. Dude. Burning. 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 Oh, yeah. I got them right here. Thanks. <laughs> there you go. Um, I'm cool. I, 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 I feel very, very accomplished in part of my organizing. One of the things I was going to do was uh, Gavin convinced me to buy this litter robot, cat litter robot. Okay. It's called a robot, but it's just, it's a cat box that cleans itself. Like a Roomba? 
Yeah, except it stays in one place. So it doesn't drive cat shit all over my house. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had one years weird. ago. It's like, is it like a comb that goes through and That's deposits the old it in the end? Okay. This looks like a big egg. A egg. Oh, I've seen those. And it rotates. I've seen those, yeah. And then it's got this whole system. You'd like it because it's like... It puts the litter down in one place and it keeps rotating. It's like a rolling sifter. All the clumps stay up on the on the screen and then kid? they fall off into the bin. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, so I had this thing. <laughs> so, by the way, so it looks like open the pod bay doors. How? <laughs> it's like totally so. like two thousand one. It yeah. looks like a Salem cat. It looks like a prop from Portal, like Aperture Science, you know. But uh, mine went on the fritz. After a year, this is I'm not in any way endorsing this product. A, it's expensive. If something's expensive, I expect it to work, even if it's cutting edge. Um, and it, it crapped out on me ah, after uh, <laughs> about a year. And uh, I went to Gavin. I was like, I was like, yeah, man. I go, I your litter box. Yeah. I go, are you still happy with it? Because mine, mine, you know, it's not working anymore. It's on the fritz. And Gavin just goes to me, eh, nah, mine, mine died like six months ago, and never, he never said anything about it. Which I felt like you owed me to let me know. Not that I could have done anything at that point, but I feel like I went with this thing on your recommendation. It anyway. died because uh, it got left outside. Oh, well, that's a normal excuse for it to die. I think mine died because it got cat poop on it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's oh, what happened. Oh, cat poop locks that thing right up. You don't want that. You, your cat cannot poop anywhere there, near there. There no, are parts mine, of it that should not get cat poop. Mine messed up, but it was only because it was just too full. And that's when it goes. But I went online, yeah. and I found these two dudes. I think they're French. And they have a robotic YouTube channel. I'll look them up right now so I can give them a shout out. For cat shit or just robots? No, it's just robots oh. in general. <laughs> and they told me how to fix it. I ordered a part from them, a little weight sensor, and fixed it. And it didn't work. And I was like mad at the French guys. I think the French. <laughs> and uh, then I went back this weekend and like did some more research and like calibrated the weight sensor. And now it's perfect. Now it's totally perfect. 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 I There's think it's no a good product. It means you have to yeah. change it less than, you know, every day. Anything that you can do to reduce... The amount of time you deal with poop is money well spent. If you, if you could shit up front, go all, all of your shit for the month, but it took like 90 minutes, would you do it? Oh, is that, I gotta do it once, once a month? 90 minutes? I would absolutely do that. You I spend mean, 90 how, minutes how long a month spend pooping? Shitting in a That's, month? It's like three minutes a day, right? Uh, spend, yeah. yeah, it is really yeah. inconvenient to have right, a lot so of stuff took, come out of you once a month, every month. All at one time? Would you rather bleed three minutes a day or just do it once? Uh, like, would you rather week? crust three minutes a day? Can you okay, tell what? when you can you tell when your period's coming because the crust stops? Is it like when the tide goes away? I was going to say yes until you said when the crust stops. <laughs> That's like when the beat drops. You can tell, yeah. <laughs> you can when, tell the when your period's stops. coming because like you just feel this kind of like pulse, like. You get a little bit crampy, but like it, it's almost like your uterus is just like it is time. That on the inside, begin to yeah. purge. Exactly. All right, these guys are Robot Shop TV. They seem like super nice dudes, and I think they're French. Here, I'll play. I'll play their their voice. See, see is if it they Todd beaten, doing a weird accent? No, it's not. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's gonna see laugh. if they've beaten Rabbit in the last week. What what accent is this? That's a robot dude. I know. <laughs> sorry, it's a, it's a YouTube video. Uh, aluminium, so I think. Yeah, yeah, that's French. French. And we're both domestic robots. Domestic robots. Yeah, that's very omelette du fromage. Phil and Josue. Phil and Josue. So, I learned all about it. But I like any other how-to video on YouTube. There's a vernacular to YouTube. And people always want to bitch about it. People, especially pe people on YouTube. They're like, the whole like and subscribe, which we do on our YouTube videos mm -hmm. and don't do it other places. People always complain about that. But you're fucking watching videos on YouTube, you know? It's like, you can't complain about the problem it's, when you're part of the problem. Right. If it works, <laughs> if, if people are doing it, that means right. it works. And if you're such a fucking aficionado and you're gonna cr criticize the format, go watch it somewhere else, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, really, you're the one doing the basic thing of showing up on YouTube to watch videos when there's a billion other places to watch video. I digress. Anyway, on this uh, video, they, which they do in all have two videos, because I watch like, how do I switch out a light switch? Or, you know, how do I uh, replace a pane of glass? Can I I've predict, never done that. Can I predict what you're going to say? What am I going to say? Skip Good. the first minute. Skip the first minute, no. But the thing about it at the end is like, if you liked our video, uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel. It's like, why would I want to subscribe to a how-to channel? It's like, oh, today we're fixing a Ford you know, F-250. <laughs> it's like, oh, great. I need to know about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, there's some channels what that does not apply to. It's very to. selective when you need them. Yeah, you are a search channel. You yeah. are not a subscribe channel. It's like, I don't want to know, like, how to repair a faucet I don't own. You know, you know, what, you know what is a good one, though, is the, the lock-picking lawyer. 
Oh, Trevor loves that it's channel. It's all like, like I, I'm never gonna pick a lock. I don't care. But anytime he picks a new lock, I'm like, ooh, let's see what's wrong with this one. <laughs> like, I really want to see, you know, what problem this lock has. So, is there a perfect lock? Uh, he's done some that are good, but most of them are terrible. Like there's a lot. There's a lot of like. I never realized it was a thing. A lot of knockoff locks. Like it look a bad lock that looks like a good lock, mm. but it's just like a third party manufacturer who's copying the way it looks, and you take it apart. It's like, <clears> oh no, it's garbage. Fuck it, I'm gonna subscribe to these guys. Our journey towards I want it. Sorry, we, I left my mic. Do you think I would see anything if I had a macro lens and I tried to film the quartz in a watch, or is it too small? You could probably. You probably would be able to, because it's it's very high frequency, right? right. The little fork. Yeah, mm -hmm. super high. I, I actually don't I know what that anything. looks like. I guess in my head I've always assumed it's just a chunk of rock in there. It's I think, a, it's I like think a fork. it is. Yeah, it's just like a little a, crystal. It's like a tiny tuning fork that... Yeah, when, when it gets electricity, it has a certain frequency that it vibrates. And a, a very and, specific, and the other consistent way around frequency. Yeah, it's divisible by most like 15 times into seconds. Most clock crystals vibrate at a frequency of 32,768 hertz. So 32... How long? 3,000 times a second. How long have they known that? Like, how did the fuck did they measure that back in the days of watchmaking? You know? Like, how, when did quartz come around? I, I guess I'm thinking of it as being turned of the last century, but maybe it was like the middle the of the last century. first quartz clock was built in 1927. Okay. And I think it's because Split when you... the difference? It, uh, some crystals, when you, like, impact them in some way, they generate electricity, and then it works the other way. So mm -hmm. you can make them move with electricity. Something I've always been fascinated by is, like, the way that things break on a molecular level, like when you get mm. down to like a few molecules, they break in very specific patterns, like cubes or things like that. Like yeah. things break in certain ways. I've but, always, I've always, uh, I don't know why, I've always been fascinated uh, by that. A, a, a corollary to that, another thing I'm fascinated by is how things are cut, like knives. Like are there specific bonds that are cut? Mm. Or like the way that you use a sharp object to wedge between another object. Yeah. Like how, what, what is that focal point that goes through and, and, and splits it? I got off on a whole mental tangent this, today about that because I got up to go to the gym uh, uh, briefly. Then I got back into bed like I was going to like, brush my teeth and I went back in bed. Then Ashley got up for a second and when she got up, I moved over to where her bed side of the bed was warm. I thought about that story you told where Trevor always warms up your side of the bed. I was mm. just over there trying to get her warm. <laughs> yeah, because I was cold. Steal her warm. And then I was thinking, it's like those sheets are... It's heat. It's energy. They're storing energy. I don't think of sheets as like an energy storage mm. device, but it's like, what is happening to a sheet that makes it store energy? Like, are is the sheet or a toilet seat? Yeah, it's like yeah, the toilet seat molecules vibrating, like they retain the heat. Heat's not like a thing that like hangs out on the seat for a while. It's an energy and it's stored but on, a, on a molecular level. You're not touching any of it, right? Either right. I'm just, just touching the. Uh, Polar fields. So I guess the, if your yours are vibrating at some point and you're also releasing heat, then the heat, the the seat is just getting it, and then that takes a while to disperse when you've got up. People, people who are joining us late in the podcast are just going to think we're a bunch of stoners because we're eating pancakes. <laughs> and talking about, like, right. Metaphysics. We have like chocolate chips. It's, and it's almost time to wrap up. Actually, it's time to wrap up. But before we go, we do have um, a couple last pancakes to show. <gasps> yes, from uh, at like the Reaper. Oh, oh my oh, god! Oh, you did it! Trying to show me up. That's almost the exact shape. I wonder how. Set up, dude. How did his flip go? Is what I wonder. These people have nice houses. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, well, look, you're not everyone's a professional. It's so someone. Like, if you're listening to the audio podcast, someone tried the massive pancake flip it's uh, like an accordion. that it's I tried. A wrinkly. It kind of looks like a crab. Yeah. And if I may, they they attempted and they completely fucked it up. So good for not you, as fruit as I thought there would be. That looks incredible. Not as much fruit. Oh, I like that. oh. pancake fruit roll. I like that. Pretty. That's pretty smart too, because they had a. Uh, they had a paper towel set up. We didn't have that. I had to like go across a couple plates. My presentation was off. Their presentation was way better. People pretty that. inventive this year with the pancakes. Yeah. Although, I, although here's another thing: podcast listeners have very nice houses. Did you see that countertop? That's yeah. a nice and countertop. And the nice fireplace. Oh, yeah, the fireplace on the last one. Now the countertop on this Invite one. Invite us over next nice. year. Can we do crepes? Are you gonna make them? If you make them, sure. Yeah, you make them. Don't you eat like one of those yeah. like spatula things to? Gavin will figure it out. Oh, you could do like the. Yeah, the and technique. you like you like flatten it out with that. Like, yeah, long and then you silver. get a good you get a good flip on. I think the ones I've always had before for crepes are it's almost like a sm kind of like a small dome. Yeah, a little bit, and then you turn it over, dip it in the batter, and then that's the pan, oh. and it like cooks it on top Never of, thought that. of that. I've seen stuff ago. like this where they use basically a very long, skinny metal spatula. I've seen that too, and so they like, like they do this crazy like they have that technique that humans develop whenever yeah. they try are to do a, anything multiple somehow. times. Are you a flat panner? <laughs> I am a flat panner. All right. Well, I want to say one thing. 
Time to wrap up, but go ahead. I want to give a a, a shout-out to something that I saw this weekend, also that I liked, which was a show that I really enjoy, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and there's a video online. They got renewed for season seven seven Mm -hmm. on NBC. Oh, nice. And maybe it was because I watched the Fire Festival and thinking about this Vessel Cup and seeing these, like, tech offices for all these people and everything. (laughs) But uh, the video is really wholesome. The... Somebody off camera, it sounds like an exec from NBC is telling them, we're happy to have you back for season seven. <clears throat> Everyone goes crazy. They're all ecstatic. They were apparently looked like they were doing a table read for an episode. So they were all in one place. And everyone's was like, high-fiving and cheering and so happy. But what I noticed about it is Brooklyn Nine-Nine is a network television show that is in its uh, sixth season, now getting renewed for its seventh season. Major stars, Terry Crews, Andy Samberg. Podcast alumni. Yeah, exactly. Podcast alumni, uh, Andy Sandberg. Um, you know, they're on the show. And there's a lot of people, it, there's something about that video, if you can go watch it, where they're just in this shitty white room. Like, it looks like a break room yeah. on the studio with nothing on the walls. <clears throat> it's just completely undecorated, and they're doing this table read at, like, four folding tables that have, like, what look like blue vinyl tablecloths on them, like something you'd have at a picnic. And that's where they're doing their table read. And it's something that I've always admired about production people is production people tend to have the shittiest offices. And I know when they're big stars, you think like, oh, they have like trailers and no brown M&Ms and all that shit. <laughs> but it's like production people in general, they want to make sure that every dollar they spend ends up on the screen. That's all that every, anything I've ever encountered for production people has always been that way. And I just like I love seeing this video. And a lot of the time a production person's office will move to the location if they're, you know, hands on producing it. So they have to have all this stuff in like a portable setup anyway. So yeah. it kind of doesn't really matter what room they're in. Yeah, exactly. And then I see this thing like the fire Festival and it's like these guys and they're on yachts and everything trying to figure out how to build people out of money, you know. Yeah, and money shouldn't come first for those, for those things. Right. It's like it's all about the experience and what you're creating for people, mm-hmm. you know. And I don't know. It's, it's funny to me that people we associate as being very well established, like the cast and crew and producers of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, they're still like Gritting it out, you know, and getting it done and making a good show for people and like these other guys who are just like showing up and thinking they think about the big thing and how they're going to emulate that. And then they just fail miserably and, you know, make everybody's life a misery. So anyway, yeah. I just want to say something like that. Uh, all right. So stay tuned. Watch Brooklyn uh, Nine-Nine. If, if you're watching, uh, stay tuned. We have our segment with Zachary Levi oh, coming yeah. up uh, immediately after this. Check it out. We uh, we had fun talking about that guy. It's always good to have him here. He's right. handsome. See y'all later. Sexy. Bye. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to the <laughs> Supplemental <laughs> episode of the Roosters Podcast. Doing something a little special today. Uh, we got a special guest with us. We got uh, Zachary Levi here. Very special guest. Uh, back again. Special guest. Back again. And then our our headlining special guest. We got John Reisinger as well. Yeah. I'm here too. Damn it. He's off. He's I'm just off camera right back over there. So as, as camera talk, on me. Camera on me. <laughs> there it is. Camera on me. <laughs> oh, oh there's like a million of you behind you. All cameras like on me. All cameras on me. As we dive <laughs> into you, the Tupac? world <laughs> of comic books where the internet expects us to have an encyclopedic knowledge of every single comic book ever written, John is here to make sure that we stay on track, right? Right. You're going to fact check us as we go. Because is, if, if people don't know, Zachary Levi's in an upcoming superhero movie. Yes. What? Oh, yes, Shazam, Avengers Endgame. I mean, Endgame. April, I mean Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't be an, you can't be an Endgame. I, I, I saw you're in no, Ragnarok. Dead, bro. <laughs> I'm, dead. I'm already dead. I'm, I'm dead as dead. Yeah, no, Shazam. Yeah, it's coming out on April 5th, which is super super exciting. It's it's like a. Uh, I showed the trailer to my wife, and you know some of her favorite movies are uh, movies where like kids become adults, like big and 13 going on 30 sure, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Freaky and, Friday. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. she's Me? like this. This is exactly. <laughs> Your life, <laughs> my life. When I grew up, <laughs> this, this movie's right up her alley. It's like a, a kid oh. gets superpowers and becomes like an adult superhero. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the that's the Not easiest. Like, that's the elevator pitch right there. But by the way, it's completely accurate. It's it's uh, big meet Superman. That's what that's what the movie is. And it's got I I, I think it to me it feels like it's got some really kind of fun. Um, I don't know Amblin feel to it. You know, so like. It's accessible for a whole family, but it's not a kids movie. It's it's not mm-hmm. a fa- it's not a family movie. Uh, it, it has some gravity and some darkness, and you know, good versus evil. And so, the like, themes. if a kid accidentally stumbles into the theater, it's not a problem. No, 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 no. That's kid, what I'm saying. Right? It's like it's family accessible. <laughs> Wait, but, you know. I need I need to be walked through the scenario where a child, <laughs> unaided <laughs> by a parent, walking around. stumbles into a theater somehow. Again, yeah, yeah. my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> you were working there. <laughs> in fairness, my family did own a movie theater, and I was yes. often walking around in it. Is that Barbara? Are you doing Barbara right now? It is. 
spot I on. Mean, <laughs> it was kind of like an old Jewish woman <laughs> doing Barbara. Which is Which me. is you. Yes, I understand. In 20 but, to 40 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her 13 20? going on 80 is what that was. <laughs> 13 <laughs> going on 80? Yeah. That, that's my that's what it is. All right, yeah, five. Yeah. Five. There you go. That's better. <laughs> so when you, when you play a part that is also being played by another actor yeah. in the same movie, like yeah. I always read about Tom Hanks playing Forrest Gump. There was a young Forrest Gump in the movie. He actually based a lot of his accent on the young actor. On Haley Joel Osment? No, that Haley Joel not Haley Joel Osment. Oh, he was his son. Spoiler, right. John G. John, supposed to be here to get things right. Did you just say yeah. spoiler about Forrest Gump? Yeah, hey. I did. <laughs> There's no shelf life gonna, on Forrest Gump. I was going to watch it tonight. It's spoiler, he ran a lot. By the way, it is one of my favorite movies of all time. It I holds love up. that movie. It's so good. It's so good. It holds up remarkably well, too. Yeah. Even the special effects are pretty, like, because I remember when they did that stuff. That was one of the first movies that ever really did, like, that kind of face, like, really good facial replacement stuff. Like, oh, yeah. JFK shaking hands. Yeah. And the, yeah. You know, splicing them into the world. I was like, this is so incredible. That was now like, it's in, obviously light years better, but even then it was like, at the time, and you watch it go, it's still pretty good. It did help they had the historical footage, which is already kind of grainy. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, totally. Also, yeah, they yeah, can yeah. kind of fix a lot of the, uh, yeah. you know, clipping people in, they can just put a little grain over the top of it. Mm -hmm. and it works oh, for sure. Better. Yeah, totally. It's like but an Instagram you, filter. Do you have to work <laughs> with the, the young actor who plays Billy Batson? Yeah, so, so it's interesting. I mean, you know, uh, Forrest Gump, both Tom, Tom Hanks movies, but but Forrest Gump, uh, he was the older version of the same character. Um, uh, but they were kind of in two different time, you know, it, it wasn't, they weren't in this, they didn't exist in the same right. world or same time. Literally one and moment And big, big, they exist in the same time, except that the way the premise of Big worked is that he went from being young to being big and stayed big the whole movie and then went back to being young again. In Shazam, we're constantly shifting back and forth within the same oh, time yeah. and space. So it's a really interesting, I mean, it's, that was really more, you know, David Sandberg, our director. I, I, I'm I, just trusting him that he, because he was the through line, but between my performance and Asher Angel's performance and just, you know, making sure that it all adds up and, you know, and we and Asher and I got some time to rehearse, like get to know each other and hang out and break some bread and met his family and all that. And we got some time to rehearse and go through some scenes, but it was very limited, unfortunately, because we were starting production and he was still working on his Disney show, um, uh, Andy Mack at the time. And so he worked on that all the way up to when he started shooting. So we didn't have a lot of time to get to hang out or he didn't get to watch me doing a lot of the stuff that I was doing and so on and so forth. But I mean, I, I trust David, you know, I think, uh, and that's what you have to do. You, you know, every movie, the director is the captain of the ship and, you know, he or she says what they're looking for and you try to have to honor that as best you can. And, yeah, and it. yeah, 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 totally. But Asher's so talented. I mean, he's like, he's going to be like another Justin Timberlake, that kid. He's like, he was like, he's a Disney kid, not just in the, yeah, he sings really good. Does he sing in the movie? No, there's no oh, singing in the movie. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, no. Um, no, yeah, he's like super talented. He like dances and sings and like he's the whole night. Did you all get matching tattoos when you rapped? We did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. like we got we got those uh we got those um Elvis Presley uh, Thunderbolts <laughs> TCB. There you go. Right. In fact, that's right. It, maybe you can Oh, the mic's blocking it. You can't oh, see it. Yeah, yeah. I saw it. I can't by confirm. Way, by the way, uh, a uh, little bit of a tangent, but I think so awesome. Uh, the, the the TCB, the Elvis TCB Thunderbolts. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. Right? The iconic yeah. with TCB. That he and all of his guys had tattooed on them. That my cousin Nikki also has tattooed on her because she's dope and she's a rock star. <laughs> and also, Elvis's like little half cape. Both of those are because of Captain Marvel, because really? of Shazam's original, yeah, Cap well, Captain Marvel, and specifically even Captain Marvel Jr., who was Freddy's character back in the day, that Elvis was obsessed with, and that's why he wore a cape like that, and that's why he has the Thunderbolt as his insignia. I never knew that. No, yeah. bro! Check it out, guys. Did you know Fact that, check. I actually didn't know that. Oh. <laughs> but that's not the comics. Because that's that's an Elvis fact. I don't know Elvis. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> well, if you don't know Elvis, then you don't know anything. Did Elvis make his way into any Shazam comics ever? Has, oh, no. that'd be really interesting to see. Where, he where had Shazam to Shazam start? Because he probably didn't start as Captain Marvel. But it was, it was a part of like... 1939. I, yeah, I looked it up earlier. It was 1939. Here's a, here's a quiz. For Fawcett Comics as Captain Marvel. Trivia. What was it? What was it? Fawcett Comics. Fawcett, Fawcett comics, comics. Yeah, basically ripped off Superman and... He's I mean, that's Superman. what they did. They ripped off Superman, and then they started out selling Superman. So then they got sued by DC, or, you know, the entity that essentially was DC at that time. Uh, and Fawcett then went under not too long after that. And then DC bought all of Fawcett's uh, catalog. And so they, then that's how they ended up with Captain Marvel. 
And then they kind of let the name lapse with the rights and the mm -hmm. trademarks and stuff. And then Marvel swooped in and grabbed the name. And now there's been all it's, been, it's a very convoluted. It's a very convoluted. So then after that happened, they couldn't sell a comic. DC couldn't sell a comic that said Captain Marvel on it. Sure. You could call him that in the comic, but you couldn't actually say Captain Marvel on the front. So a lot of people never if you're just a glancing person, like you read other comics, but you don't know that one. You're like. Oh, is that's called Shazam because it would say with the power of Shazam become Earth's mightiest mortal just a little bit of just back history just some history yeah. Yeah. So so now you're in a film coming out called Shazam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, and that's the, the where babies the, come the, from the and result. that's yes And that's why uh, the movie is called Shazam. How many times do you think you've said the word Shazam? Um, <laughs> well, you don't say it in the movie. I mean, a good amount, but yeah. do you say it in the movie? Because it's Billy. He Billy has to says, say it. To yeah, turn I have back. to say it when, it. I, when I transform back. To oh, Billy. you go back, right? Okay, we go back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Someone should do a supercut of back, every time back, you say Shazam, back and forth. <laughs> including all your press like Lady tour. Gaga's supercut of her thanking uh, Bradley Cooper. Um, <laughs> so you and Asher didn't like tag out on set or anything like that. Like he'd say I, Shazam every once in a while. Like, no, every once in a while we'd be there, uh, both shooting on the same day uh, or night, as it were, because we shot like seventy-five percent nights. But um yeah, it was like gnarly. It was crazy, and in Toronto in the middle of winter. It wow, was, that was that was pretty oh, brutal. Dude, but um, was that? I know that story. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> yeah. You know that. It's not uh, fun. But yeah, occasionally we'd be working together, and we'd get that little like, you know, tap wrestler in wrestler Tag team out. In, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's a there's a shot in the the first trailer that was released that legitimately showed. Asher walking, saying the word, and then you're yeah, there and then, in the yeah, same yeah, yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah, we were yeah. both there shooting that, yeah. that specific shot, yeah. That's Which is great. That was like a shot, shot that I was shot. hoping that they would include in the trailer, oh, showing yeah, like totally. that direct transformation. Yeah. Have you seen the one where he jumps off the roof that's in the trailer? We no, I haven't off the... seen that. Oh, it's such a great shot. I stay away from like later trailers because once I decide that I'm like, I'm going to see this movie, I don't want anything yeah. else to be ruined. I no, no, totally. Thing. I think that's smart. People, yeah. people get oversaturated with trailers and you've, you've already seen like the whole movie. Well, the purpose of the trailer is to get you to go see the movie. They don't, honestly, yeah. at the end of the day, they tend to not care if they spoil the movie. And it really, the director or a producer that's involved with it really has to have a heavier hand of making sure they don't. Yeah. I always think about the Terminator movies. Every Terminator movie has been spoiled, a big twist in it, by the trailer. Like every Terminator 2, even the Genesis one that had the guy from Avatar. If you watch the trailers, it's like the biggest moment in the film is in the trailer. It's always crazy to me. There's a, a trailer that just came out for some movie about a dog. A dog's purpose. A dog's purpose, where it literally shows the entire no, wait, movie. That was the first one. A no. Dog's Way Home. A Dog's Way Home. The same movie, basically. Sure. But yeah, the entire it's movie like, is the trailer. It loses their dog, and then the dog, its journey to find its way back but home. If and it shows everything. If you're going to see that movie, though, you want to go see the uplifting story. You don't. Yeah, I mean, you want to know like, if the dog's going to make it or not. Like, I don't want to watch a two hour dog snuff film. The <laughs> last. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't want to, you don't want to, like, a wow, like that a old, took a turn. You know, yeah. that that a we just took a turn. <laughs> you want to see the dog happy and alive. Yeah. I don't want to see the trailer for your movie, guess. I do not want to see it. <laughs> I do now. Well, it's like I don't, no, let's not, I don't want to joke no, about no. dogs not being Let's <laughs> yeah. not do that. Let's move <laughs> off of that topic. So, um, you, uh, what, what was it like? So you, you wear this awesome suit yeah. in, um, uh, in, in the movie. Like, would you have a memory of like putting it on for the first time? Be like, oh, holy yeah. shit. Like, I'm, I'm a superhero. The yeah, yeah, 100%. As soon as I got the job, like the first thing they had me do was go get measured immediately because yeah. they had back timed it. Like I got hired the last possible day that they, they could hire someone because they knew how long they needed the lo the the lead time to make the suit, and it was like I don't know, let's say eight weeks. Wow. And we they had all gotten all the way up to that, and so as soon as I got the job, <laughs> they sent me directly to um, the costume designers who had already been working on all this stuff, obviously. And then we did all the measurements, and then you know, not too long after that, we had a little you know initial kind of you know first prototype to put on, the red spandex and everything, and I was sitting there looking at this thing in the mirror, <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. I was like. This is this is everything. This is not 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 even just like as an actor what I've dreamt about being able to do at some point in my career along the way. And I've been so blessed because I got to, you know, play characters like Fandral supporting Thor in the Thor movies, which is cool. But we didn't really have all that much to do. This is a bona fide cape wearing superhero, and and so the actor in me was like, oh my gosh, what a, what an incredible thing and and bucket list. But the kid in me yeah. was losing yeah. his mind. Yep. Absolutely. I was like, what is happening right now? All of all these comics and all this time that I've spent loving these worlds. And although I didn't really know Shazam uh, when I was growing up, I, I was more of a Marvel kid. But, you know, still, nonetheless, all of these these worlds. And I now get to be that guy. Did you get emotional? A, a little. I still do occasionally. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it's important. I, I think, you know, these characters, we pour a lot of our time and our energy into. That's why I have always had an appreciation for fans as I am one. I understand how much... 
we, we personalize these things a lot, you know, so they mean a lot to us. And I think that you have to, I think we all need to understand that when things don't go exactly the way we think they should go, it, we shouldn't take it personally. Yeah. It's not anybody trying to hurt you because, you know, they did something like this with a story or that with the character or whatever. But I'm a firm believer that we ought to really respect and honor the source material and the fans that have kept that IP going for so long and try to incorporate as much of that love and those nods and homages as you, as you can and give those back to the fans. So I, yeah, looking at myself wearing this suit, I was like, I get to be, I get the honor of get, playing this character mm -hmm. and the responsibility that comes along with that, you know, to go and honor all the fans yeah. who have supported it, you know, it's but super cool. That fun moment of being the kid and looking in the mirror and you put on the superhero oh. suit, it seems like you could use that to play this character in yes, particular, right? Yes, 100%, dude. This is one of the coolest things about this particular character. And, and it's it's rare that you see a character like this. In fact, you know, uh, and, and other people have far more comic book knowledge than I do. I think I have a pretty good amount. And of all the characters that I know in both DC or Marvel, the only other character I, I can think of that has this like childlike or, you know, adolescent type exuberance and like overall just like stokage to be a superhero is Peter Parker. Peter Parker and Billy Batson to me have these very similar feels in that they're good hearted kids that are smart and apt. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, they didn't ask for it. They got this thing. And instead of now sitting and brooding and being upset about it or like, oh my gosh, you know, they're immediately out there testing it out and learning. And mm -hmm. then they want to go and do good in the world. Yeah. And so I didn't have to, you know, I'm sure like, Anyone who's played Batman or Superman or any other, you know, brooding, strong character like that has always had to really probably temper themselves and their enthusiasm on set because they're like, even though inside they're stoked that they get to do this and they got to be like, I'm Batman, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I didn't yeah. have to do that at all. I got to just literally Should show up to work and like be like, I just keep, keep, this, yeah. keep this going, keep this going, you know? <laughs> Oh my God, hell yeah. I'll bring a speaker to set all the time, just play music and like, because I think, you know, well, A, I think music makes life better um, always, but... I think particularly when you're kind of sitting around on set sometimes, there's a lot of downtime and like mm -hmm. just to keep energy up and because it's fun. There's a lot of like genuine fun in this movie. Yeah. And I didn't want to lose any of that in uh, the real stuff that was happening in me. I wanted to keep that going as much as I could. I love that. They yeah. do have to tone that stuff down. Have you ever heard about the franchise that has a real bad problem with that? What he's talking about exactly <sighs> is Star Wars. They have a, a, an ongoing oh, yeah. problem in Star Wars where the actors will make noises for their guns yeah, and their lightsabers. <laughs> in, in, uh, oh yeah, I've seen movie. footage of that. Yeah. Didn't Laura Dern like make the pew pew, pew noises? Pew, pew, yeah. Yeah. You can see her in the movie saying pew pew. Just because they've like, grown up watching Star sure. Wars so they know. Sure, 100%. And they're just, they're, that's who we all are, just kids doing the, stuff that we can't believe the, we get to do. Yeah, didn't they say Ewan McGregor in the prequels was kind of going like whoa. Yeah. They need to do it. They Because he made the lightsaber. So like, that's so pure. I love that. It really is. Yeah. I think it must be so cool to grow up, especially reading comics and being into superheroes, and then to actually now be someone's superhero. Like kids yeah. are going to be watching that movie, oh, and yeah. like you're going to be their hero. Oh yeah, that is so cool. It's to me. so heady. It's so cr I can't wait for Halloween this year. Yeah. I can't wait to oh see gosh. how many kids dress up. Who are like, you going to dress up as? I don't know. <laughs> Heisenberg, I don't know. Do you get to keep, <laughs> you get to keep a suit? Can you wait, wear it? Can you dress? Can you dress up as Captain Marvel? No. Marvel? Can you be Captain Marvel from Marvel? <laughs> that, that would actually be pretty like good. That would be pretty good. That'd I be think I'm going to be... One, though. There's like four, even be, in the Marvel. No, like Brie Larson's Captain Marvel. Be like Mohawk, you yes, know, yes, uh, yes, Captain heck Marvel. Yeah, okay. Heck yeah, heck yeah. I'm going to do go. a sexy Shazam. Carol Danvers. Uh, sexy, sexy Shazam. Shazam. Yeah. <laughs> so sexy Thursday. There, there is a girl sexy Shazam. Shazam. Is there really? Yeah. He had well, like a whole bunch of other like like sibling and other people that got powers. It was Mary Marvel back in the day. Is her name Shazam? <laughs> Just ma'am. Wow. Wow. Just ma'am. Oh, fingernail painting emoji. That was good. Just ma'am. That was good. That's super good and that super really quick, good. too. Uh, That's going to be. I used. hate myself. That's becoming a meme. I got to say to you, Zachary's in yep. another show that uh, when I saw it the first season, I immediately came to Barbara and said, You've got to watch Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Yeah. You're in that? Oh, shit. You haven't seen Wait, season what? two. Fuck! You just ruined it. I just ruined it. Well, ruined it. well, no, that's not a spoiler. I mean, it's really well, not. Clearly, my friend Barbara really doesn't really follow nice me surprise. closely enough on social media. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. Holy <laughs> crap! Social meds fail right here. <laughs> nice beard. <laughs> How did you? <laughs> 
Where did Barbara go? There's a bearded oh, man sitting next to I don't know. Let uh, go look for Barbara. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Barbara's in the <laughs> building. One of the personas French. She's now a Star uh, Wars character. Of something, yeah. She works in Jabba's palace. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, like Watto showed up for a second. <laughs> Jabba no Just, you know how you say beard in French. It's Balbu. 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 Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, the Marvel Barbara's Beard. We were talking about Barbara's yeah, dude, Beard. It's, it's such a fantastic show. What it's a freaking so cast, dude. It's so delightful. It's such an incredible cast. Yeah. The, uh, the, the creators and, uh, who are the writer, producers, and directors of most episodes, Amy Sherman Palladino and Dan Palladino, are so talented and so cool and were so gracious to... Uh, invite me into that whole world and be a part of that show and literally like just get to, you know, kind of, you know, jump into their slipstream while they were heading for all of these awards that they were grabbing. And then yeah. I got to win a SAG award as a part of the ensemble. And I mean, it, it was all super dreamy, but they're, they deserve all of it, man. I mean, the, yeah. every department, every person in, in that crew and that cast and all the above the line and the other producers, Dana and like they strive for excellence, and you see it on screen. It's really, really 100%, 100%. special. And you need to watch the second season. Yeah, yeah. you do. That's yeah, you do. I'm like halfway it. through the first one. I love that character too, Benjamin. He's just such like yeah. an odd, quirky yeah, character. Man. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah totally. Just, I really, I just want to tell you in person. I just your approach to that character is great. Oh, just, cheers, thanks, yeah. man. Well, that's a lot of their writing, though. You know, I mean, that's that's when they when I had my first conversation with Amy and Dan, I was like, so who's this guy? And they're like, so he's you know he's he's different. He's weird, and he and he, and he likes. Different weird girls. I see and why yeah. you were cast. <laughs> By the way, it is a little bit of a talk. <laughs> There's a lot of Benjamin in me, for sure. For sure. But yeah, so, it was a great role. And they, they wrote him excellently. And Rachel, I, you couldn't ask for a better scene partner. She's so talented. And she's so gracious. And, you know, they, the whole group welcomed me with... with um, open arms and so much love and we just got to you know play tennis together and with mm -hmm. incredible dialogue you know yeah. I mean it's that's a dreamy job and so much dialogue too it seems like mm. the scripts for that show must be like two pages a minute or more just a, oh, you yeah. must get books it's for dense. these scripts uh yeah I don't know I mean they never particularly felt long in page count but certainly the cadence and this, like bang, bang, it's bang. super rapid fire yeah. but that's what they've been doing I mean you know Amy who uh Sherman Palladino also did um, Gilmore Girls, yep. and I never saw Gilmore Girls, but I heard it was Ooh, the they. same. Oh yeah, was that? Oh yeah, yeah. there's no breaths in between. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go back and watch. And the yeah. same with Maisel. I mean, you know, that's kind of their their wheelhouse. Like I they really it. understand that, and yeah. it, and uh, clearly people resonate with it. It's you know doing well. Mm -hmm. Uh, also wanted to something else. Watch John has his hand up. I have a question oh. that I wanted to ask about Shazam specifically, mm -hmm. if I'm mm -hmm. allowed to. Okay, so specifically the director himself. Uh, Sandberg, his previous films were were uh, horror films. Horror films. films. Yeah. I mean, he did he films. did Lights Out and and Annabelle and that kind of thing. Yep. Um, is that like in Shazam at all? Does it get like freaky at all, or did he have to like turn that completely off? Does that get freaky? Um, <laughs> does Shazam get freaky? Does Shazam, does get, freaky? Shazam get freaky? They will on Halloween. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <just> ma'am. <laughs> just you calm down over here, Shaz ma'am. You weren't even proud of that. Uh, uh, so so um. You know, honestly, it's 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 one of the reasons why I think that David was such an inspired choice um, as a director, you know, that, that New Line and Warner Brothers made, because I think that, well, clearly what he showed them was that he could execute making a, a film multiple times over, like, you know, Lights Out. He was, you know, he's like a Swedish cat who was discovered through his shorts and stuff online on YouTube, which are really good. And that's how Lights Out. Yeah. Excuse me, how Lights Out happened. And. They gave him, you know, X amount of dollars to make that movie, and then that made X amount of dollars. And they're like, okay, well, we'll give you now X amount of dollars. And then uh, uh, Annabelle Creation made X amount, of, or Annabelle too. Annabelle, Annabelle Creation. It's Annabelle Creation, like yeah. Um, at any rate, you know, so so that kept working very well on a monetary level, and and also on a creative level. He was making good films. And then they were looking at this IP, and I think you know it was really smart for them to say, hey, this guy actually could actually could make a really cool different um, uh, version of this with, you know, with some actual, I don't know, um, choices that w that other people might not necessarily make within the studio system. Because, you know, look, a movie about a 14-year-old who can become an adult and has superpowers can easily fly off the rails. Yeah. Like, yeah. easily become a... Like all, like just all of the winks and all the nudges. No, I mean, I, I mean, leading yeah. up to being a fan of Shazam and knowing the absurdity of it, like, and also like a little bit of the the falters and steps along the way of DC's yeah. you know, cinematic universe. It was leading up to the release of the trailer for Shazam that I was like, 
Yeah. Oh, racing. Yeah. Sure. Trailer sold me on it instantly. I oh, was thanks, on like man. like that's like for someone who's like I think the trailer came out like after like Justice League and Justice League was like Oh, trailer came out. Yeah, Comic-Con in San Diego, which was well after Justice League. And so Justice yeah. League already had like kind of a, a salty flavor in my mouth of like, you know, execution of these big titles. Yeah, and, yeah. and again, Shazam is, is a title that I've always loved a lot and I was like, I really want this to be good. Trailer sold me immediately, but I was just so surprised from going from when the director was announced from his previous work, and not that a director who's got a different genre of work before and can't do stuff. I mean, Jordan Peele is that person. He's been doing comedy. Sure, now he's yeah, like, yeah. I'm the king of horror. Yeah, yeah. So I just the fact that when the trailer came out, the tone was just so perfect. It was mm -hmm. that not cheesy, not oh, like yeah. full of wink wink at the camera, but still a good level of like humor and moderation of it all. I, I was sold good for it. Filmmakers are good filmmakers. You remember when Peter Jackson was announced that he was <laughs> taking on the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Seriously. Yeah. Peter Jackson, the dude oh, yeah. who makes the weird puppet Meet, movies, and yeah, yeah. What, what did they do? A movie like Meet the Deedles, or Meet something? the Feebles, Meet, Meet the, the Feebles. Feebles. Wait, that's what he did before Lord of the Rings. Yeah, and Dead Alive was yeah. another one. It's called Brain yeah. Dead. I think wow. Heavenly Creatures yeah. was like the, the only serious movie. He did weird, gory like serious. horror films. Yeah, but he was a good filmmaker, and people loved his movies. Yeah, when that was it was, it was a big deal. It's like who? Why are they giving him that much yeah, money? Was, and, that, and by the way, <laughs> that, and that was <laughs> unprecedented because how often before or after have you seen a studio, any studio? Commit to making a trilogy right out of the gate. Yeah, eight months. Every of filming once in a while, three films. what's that? Like eight months of filming of all three films. Yeah, yeah. Let's cross the, the board. And because like the best you'll ever see is like a you know it's like a a, um, a Back to the Future or 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 Matrix kind of a situation where they made the first one and they go oh this did really well now we'll give you a bunch of money and you can go two three back to back yeah but never do you see a studio say yeah here's all the money <laughs> to go make front. by the yeah. way an an epic like epic of epics. And you're the guy who mm -hmm. did those films. Yeah, because yeah. he showed the vision. He showed the vision. I think David probably, in their initial meetings, showed the vision of how he thought this could all work out. And I think it's awesome. I think he and Maxime, our, our um, uh, DP, um, have painted a lot of really, really cool frames to mm -hmm. capture this world in. And also, you know, like I was referring to earlier, the good versus evil theme throughout the film, you know, you want the evil to be scary. You want the evil to be evil. Yeah. You want it to be dark. You need it to be mm -hmm. dark. Um, and I think a David Sandberg is that kind of guy who understands dark because he does that horror stuff and then but he's also very funny he's a super super dry sense of humor but he's very funny and uh so he got that stuff and you know what and i i am also super indebted to him for giving me so much leash like allowing me to go and kind of inhabit this uh this character and um and every time he saw something was like you know maybe that doesn't feel like exactly what I'm looking for. Can you know? I was like, it's like great, cool. Let's you know, like the, he collaborates fantastically, and but he has I, opinions about like specifically about what he wanted. You know, I mean, I remember sometimes, you know, in that supermarket um, uh, or or um, Quickie Mart scene that's in the trailers where you know the guys the, th the thugs are shooting me, yeah, and the bullets like the first one bounces and it hits the ground <laughs> and kind of slow mo like. With that night when we were shooting it, David was sitting there with a bag of shells, or <laughs> yeah, bag of shells, and he was very and looking at a, a monitor with the framing, and he's just very like one by one until it was the exact perfect shell mm -hmm. drop and so bounce. So he was and, the one dropping them. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. He or not yeah. shell? I guess they were the, the flattened bullets. The slug. Yeah, yeah, he and I both. Yeah, because there was occasionally there was some that were around me, and I got to drop some. But anyway, the the point is his specificity. He cared. You know, he cared about making this movie, and he had that darker side in his back pocket to really keep. I think you know that evil, evil. So who dropped the bullet? Right? Was it you or him? Oh, no. I know. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> These lips are sealed. <laughs> You'll hear the commentary. Uh, well, we uh, we need to to wrap Yo, up. I, I got right question. Any last last question before we oh. wrap up? Eight weeks, you found out, before the suit was done and everything like that? Um, did you know you were playing a superhero? I just gotta ask, did you like go well, to the gym? Well, no, I'm, oh, dude, I've been in the gym. I wanted to mention, uh, yes. Henry Cavill complimented you. Right? Didn't he? Didn't, didn't he like compliment uh, like on an Instagram post of you oh, working we were, out? Yeah, no, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, he yeah. was, he was, he was very complimentary. Yeah, man, I mean, look, I've been, I, literally the day I got called and I got the job, I was at the gym. I was already getting I was already getting back into the gym anyway because I was like I just need to go and be healthy man I just want to be I quit mm -hmm. smoking like all kinds of stuff. Congrats! And, uh, Congrats thank yeah. you. Oh yeah. my gosh, it's been like almost two years, guys. It's so Congrats. so so, so good. Feels so much better. That's the best. 
Oh my gosh, you can breathe again. Anyway, we'll talk about smoking another time. But, <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, so no, I've been in the gym five, six days a week for the last two years and eating tons of calories, depending on if I'm in a build phase or a cut phase or whatever mm -hmm. that is. Now, because we're going on tour, uh, we're about to start this press tour and, you know, I, I need to stay kind of like light and healthy and like moving forward. Do you want another so. beer, by the way? Yes, I definitely <laughs> no, 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 about to start this press tour. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, 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 no. I still have two more days of freedom. Then we go crazy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you look great. Do it Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I feel yeah. good. I feel good. I'm super, super grateful. I, I hope that um, wherever we go in the world, I hope that wherever this movie uh, opens in the world, that people, that it resonates with them and that they enjoy it and they feel like we put our heart and soul and blood, sweat and tears into it because we did. And I, I, I think, I think we made, I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know, <laughs> but I think we made something really good. When do you get to see it? Like on premiere? No, there's going to be screenings that lead up to the actual premiere in L.A. I'm not. I, I'm not sure at which one I will get to see it. Yeah, but uh, yeah. It, it, it looks super fun. The trailers look like super bright and yeah, uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, and there's like a new one. Go I, watch it, have a good there's time. a new trailer dropping soon. I don't know exactly when, but for all the people out there that are yelling for the second trailer, guys, it's coming. I promise mm -hmm. there is one. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we're all really looking forward to, uh, yeah. to seeing the film. Thanks for having me back, guys. Thanks for stopping by. We're, it's good to have you back on the podcast. Bruce again. Go Bye. check it out. Bye. Thank you, John. <laughs> Hey, oh, if you're okay. watching this video on YouTube, cool. then guess what? You're fucking part of the problem. So you deserve exactly what's about to happen to you. Gus, say the words. You're going to watch the Rooster Teeth podcast and like and subscribe to this channel. Yeah, you are, bitch. Do it. We dare you. You don't. You won't do it. Do it.